Galbar Coaches Show. Ray and I are here with Coach Reeve. Coach, uh, congratulations on a, on a big victory last week. Uh, I think Ray probably has the numbers. We talked about it up in the booth, but you pretty much dominated in all aspects of the game last week. Talk about that. No, it was a great win, you know, homecoming weekend. Uh, and uh, playing against Gonzalez, who is a, you know, traditional uh, rival, uh, uh, to be able to come out and, and uh, play the way that we did was uh, – uh, was was really fun to watch. I thought our kids came out with a great mindset. Uh, we wanted to try to get up on them early, and uh, you know, I thought you know, coming right out of the gate, uh, you know, we we did just that. Um, you know, uh, stopping them on defense, getting the ball going down, and go scoring on offense. You know, really set the tone for the first half. Um, and uh, you know, the the uh, first, I think the first three drives that we had, we scored and and. Uh, you know, was able to get up on them. Uh, uh, you know, 35 to eight at halftime, uh, or 35 to seven, whatever it was, and uh, and so you know that was really big. And and uh, you know then um, then coming out in the second half, um, you know we talked about at halftime. You know the the eight points, I guess it was eight, 35 to eight at halftime. But those, you know, that last eight points that uh, or the only eight points they got in the first half, we kind of felt like. Uh, we, you know, we had relaxed a little bit. Um, you know, it was a very uh, hot and humid night, if you remember. And uh, that's, you know, there's a lot of different elements that you play in in football, but I'm not so sure that the that a very hot, humid night is maybe not one of the toughest ones to play in, uh, just because it zaps your energy, uh, you know, real quick. And uh, but I was really proud of our kids, you know, how we uh, how we handled it for the most part, but. Uh, towards the end of the second quarter, I thought we kind of took our foot off the gas a little bit, and uh, you know we weren't as aggressive defensively on that drive that they went down and scored. Thought we let the humidity and the just fatigue get to us a little bit, and uh, so we went in at halftime. And and uh, on the one hand, we were you know extremely happy with the you know the lead that we had, but at the same time, we were not overly thrilled with how we finished the half and. Um, just you know, challenged our kids to you know don't worry about what the score is. Uh, let's go out. Let's let's uh, you know let's go out with a mentality of it's zero to zero and and uh, um, you know let's let's attack. Let's go back to attacking. Um, you know on, on both sides of the ball and I thought our kids did a great job of that. We came out, uh, got a big stop uh, to start off with, and then uh, uh, or I guess maybe we got the ball the first in the second half, but. Um, Nevertheless, we go down, we take the the, the ball down and, and go score, and uh, get some stops defensively, and uh, you know, and then and uh, kind of the the rest of the game was um, uh, was was history, so to speak. But you know, one of the good things about the game as well was that uh, uh, we were able to uh, uh, get in. Uh, you know, all of our players, everybody was able to contribute to the win, um, and that's very important. You know. Uh, uh, everybody's got an, a very important role on our team. Uh, sometimes uh, that role isn't always seen on Friday nights, and so. Uh, but those kids have been working extremely hard, um, every single one of them. And so to be able to go out and, and get the reward of being able to play on Friday night, and then not only playing, but uh, you know our second offense drove the ball down the field and scored. Um, you know there early in the fourth quarter, and uh, that was great to see as well. And so. You know, overall, uh, it was a great night. Uh, you know, one of the things that we had talked about going into last week's game was uh, learning how to handle success. You know, after the Yoakum game going into the El Campo, uh, you know, we were wanting to see how we were going to respond to adversity and uh, had a great response, obviously, against El Campo. And then, you know, how are we going to, to handle success? Because sometimes that's harder to handle than, than adversity is. Cause, because you can become complacent, and um, you know, I thought our kids uh, handled it extremely well, and and we came out you know, with the right mindset, and um, you know, played a played a really good football football game overall. I thought our uh, offensive line and defensive line uh, really dominated the line of scrimmage, and you know, as we talk about often, that's where it starts. Um, you know, and then. Uh, um, then you know those guys allow the guys behind them to make plays, whether it's on offense or defense. Uh, but they allow them to make plays, and and uh, and our kids did. We had had some uh, good balance, you know. I thought in uh, in terms of offense, 
Uh, one of the things going in that, that we felt like they were probably going to do at times was pack the box and try to put nine guys in there and, and, and try to stop the run. They, they'd shown that. And, um, and so we wanted to have some answers in the passing game uh, to, uh, to take advantage of, of their imbalance um, in terms of defending run and pass. And thought we executed those things really well. Uh, hit a screen pass to uh, DeAndre Lang to open up the scoring. That was a, that was a big play. Had some, had some big plays, you know, in the passing game. Um, uh, you know, at different times throughout the, really the first and the second half. And I uh, thought our quarterbacks played well, had good protection. Uh, and then defensively, uh, for the most part, with the exception of that one drive, I thought we played uh, aggressive and um, had a lot of, excuse me, had a lot of guys play really well. And so overall, it was a great night and uh, it's a great way to, uh, 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 to win a game on homecoming weekend. That was one of the things I was going to bring up was you, you got to be pleased with with uh, the fact that uh, you were able to get some of those guys in, and, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, get some more playing time, get get a sustain a drive, you know, kind of sure. deal rather than just filling in with, you know, less than a minute to go in, yeah. in, a, in a blowout. You know, yeah. they, they they got to play some quality time. So. Yeah. yeah, no, it was real good, and, and they played really well. And, and uh, you know, one of the things that as this season has gone along um, – you know, a lot of our guys have, have had opportunities to step in in, in different roles, um, different times. And uh, it's, you know, uh, that process builds depth. And I think that that show, too, with, with, that, uh, with that drive. I mean, you had some guys in there that um, that was their first opportunity to, to play. But you also had some guys in there that, you know, had already had to step into some roles um, you know, maybe in previous weeks or whatever that, uh, um, and, and so, you know, I think you can kind of see uh, s- some progress being made in terms of our depth, uh, you know, and then special teams as well was, was uh, uh, I thought our kids, uh, you know, really played well in that phase of the game too. So it was overall, it was a good win. Ray, you have anything uh, to bring up about last yeah, week's no, game? I'll just I'll say, yeah, in the front, well, the whole game, but, you know, to go, to go 10 of 12 for 248 yards passing, mm-hmm. there's a lot of high school teams that would like to be 10 of 12. Yeah. You know? And then in the first half, you only completed seven passes, but you got 212 yards out of seven yeah. passes. That's over 30 yards, 30 yards of reception. Yeah. But so, you know, they, you accurately described it. They stacked the box and you burn them with the pass. Right. So, yep. yeah, I thought Albright threw the ball, threw the ball, not Albright, Barta, uh, Barta, Barta threw the ball, threw yes. the ball really well. Yeah. So. No, it was good, and, and we've got to be able to do that. Um, you know, we've had some games where I think the previous game against El Campo, I don't think we yeah. threw the ball at all in the second all. half. No, you in the second but half. you were very bad, 263 rushing yeah. and 248 passing yeah. against Gonzalez, so you were back to your yeah. normal. No, it was – Real uh, close to 50-50. Yeah, and, and, and we feel like we've got to be that way um, uh, in order to keep defenses honest and try to defend us honestly. And uh, – you know, hopefully defenses feel like they've got to defend the run and the pass. And uh, if they overplay one or the other, um, then we've got to be able to take advantage of that. And so, um, you know, it was it was a it was a good night all the way around. Before we move into to, to Wharton, talk a little bit about how you and your staff. I mean, you, you just mentioned that you know you, you you try to keep those defensive defenses honest mm-hmm. uh, by not showing a tendency you know Mm -hmm. i mean that's something that y'all really work on right is oh absolutely you know um you know our uh there's a lot of uh planning uh that that in in breaking down of a film and um in breaking down ourselves um you know that goes into a game plan um you know ever so often i'll have you know somebody ask me like the day of the game or the day before the game you know hey coach have you have you had a chance to see him on film yet <laughs> yes uh we've seen him uh you know every for, game they play this yes year. <laughs> we've seen uh we've seen a tremendous amount um you know we, we our coaching staff is up here uh from about seven thirty, you know to about six o'clock seven thirty in the morning about six o'clock in the evening on saturdays and then we're up here again you know, uh, all afternoon and evening on Sunday, breaking down, you know, our opponent. But we also break ourselves down, and I think it's that's, you know, that's important uh, because you got to you got to know what you're doing well, what you're not, but you also have to know what your own tendencies are. And because other staffs 
are going to break you down as well. And so, you know, from an offensive standpoint, I want to know well, what is what does their defensive staff know about us? You know, what are they going to be looking for? Um, you know, what tendencies do they feel like they're going to have on us? And I want to know that as well, so that we can make sure that we don't get in a formation and a hundred percent of the time we're doing this or a hundred percent or, you know, or 85% of the time we're doing that. And, um, you know, every good team is going to have some tendencies. Um, but, uh, the more that you can do to have answers for those tendencies, um, you know, it makes you a more balanced football team. And so, you know, when you go in, uh, to a game, you, you know, you look at what, you know, their defense is going to do, uh, to, um, you know, uh, or what they've done to other offenses, um, you know, how they're going to get lined up. And uh, and so then there's a lengthy process um, that goes into formulating a game plan where, you know, the first thing is is that you got to make sure that, um, you know, scheme-wise uh, you can, you know, uh, block their defensive front, whatever that is. Then And so – there's a lot of different things that you got to go through to make sure that it's simple for your kids because, you know, we uh, even though we're up here and, and we're watching hours upon hours of film, our kids aren't. And so whatever we know has got to get onto the field. Uh, and so you got to make it simple for your kids. So we go through a lot of different things about, you know, all the different scenarios and trying to simplify, you know, a particular rule for that week so that it's very simple for our kids when they get out on the field. Um, and once you once you've done that, well, then you've also got to you've also got to be concerned with matchups, right? Because um, uh, you know we've got to get our best guy on their worst guy, you know, in terms of the passing game. Or we've got to, um, you know, if they've got a really good defensive tackle, you know, uh, well, can we single block that guy, or do we need to double team him? Um, you know, do we need to run to a certain guy? Do we need to run away? So, you know, you have these matchup things as well. And so um, there is a lot that goes that goes into it. And then the last thing that, that, that you got to factor in is that you have 40 seconds to make a decision. And, and, you know, most games we play about 150 snaps a game. So you're going to have to make 150 decisions and really, it's not even 40 seconds. By the time the play's over with, you know, you really got about 30 seconds. And uh, that's to get the ball snapped. So you got about 10 seconds to figure out the next play, get it called, get it, you know, get the get the quarterback to call it and go. So you don't have time, you know, to analyze and evaluate. You better come in prepared and knowing what, you know, they're going to do, what you're going to do, what your answers are, and uh, so that – you know, uh, things work like clockwork on Friday night. And, um, you know, with as much as we substitute people in and out and, uh, you know, the different formations and, the, and those types of things, um, you know, there, there's just a lot that goes into it. But, but, uh, but you know, our kids, you know, credit our kids. They, they, uh, they do spend time, um, you know, making sure that they understand the game plan. You know, they, uh, our offensive line uh, comes in uh, at least once, sometimes twice a week, you know, in the morning before school uh, to watch a little bit of extra film. You know, our linebackers do the same thing. Our secondary guys, you know, do the same thing. Plus, we're getting some time, you know, during our normal practices. And so um, our kids are totally committed uh, to doing what it takes to, uh, to learn about the opponent, um, you know, to make sure that they got the game plan down so that they can go execute on Friday night. And, and uh, you know, so the, the final product is what you see on Friday night for those 48 minutes. But, um, but what our kids have done to get themselves ready for that, uh, for those 48 minutes, is, uh, is a lot more than what most, you know, 15, 16, 17, 18-year-old kids are willing to do in order to be successful. And so... Uh, really proud of how our kids approach each week in, in terms of their preparation. Thank you for, for yeah. breaking that down and nice. explaining all that. That's interesting stuff. All right, congratulations on last week's victory, and uh, we move on to uh, facing the Wharton Tigers tonight in Wharton. Mm -hmm. uh, they're coming off a big victory um, over a, a rival. Yeah. Talk, talk about what uh, the Gobblers are going to face tonight against uh, Wharton. Well, I tell you what, we're going to face a very athletic football team. 
um, who is extremely dangerous. And they showed that last week. You know, they uh, they started the season off with a couple of losses to some really good teams in Sealy and West Columbia. Then they got on track by beating uh, uh, Houston Yates at home. And then uh, they turned it up to another level uh, last week, excuse me, against uh, El Campo and went to El Campo. Uh, that's a big rivalry game. And uh, they went to El Campo and, and uh, really uh, dominated that game, um, you know, in just about every in just about every facet of the game and uh, won 27 to 20 and really looked good doing it. Uh, you know, their defensive line was extremely dominant. Um, you know, they, they made a, a bunch of plays on defense. Uh, they, they showed their speed and how dangerous that they can be, you know, in, the, in both the passing game and the run game. And, uh, uh, you know, from, a, from the perspective of a coach who is about to, uh, um, uh, to play them uh, tonight, uh, it was not something that I was really wanting to see. Uh, but at the same time, it's going to be great for us because – uh, we're going to go uh, to Wharton. We're going to go play a uh, really athletic and a really good football team. And, uh, and it's going to be a great test for us in our final non-district, uh, uh, you know, uh, game of the, of the year. And so uh, we fully expect uh, the team that showed up against El Campo last week, we fully expect that team to show up against, I'm talking about Wharton's team, mm -hmm. uh, we fully expect to see that type of, uh, performance again, and and if we do, um, it, it's going to be a tremendous battle uh, tonight, and so uh, we're going to have to uh, play fast. Uh, we're going to have to be physical, and uh, you know we're going to have to execute you know our game plan um, in in order to uh, in order to be able to uh, come out with a victory tonight. But uh, with that said, our kids have had a great week of practice. Um, and they're looking forward to the challenge. You know, we've played Warden for I don't know how many years now, but several years. And, uh, you know, there's been a lot of those games that have come down to one point. Um, and so you never know how it's going to turn out. But um, but our kids understand and, and have, you know, respect for their kids and, and what they can do. And uh, they're looking forward to the challenge tonight and uh, ought to be a great matchup. What uh... – Talk about what the Wharton Tigers bring to uh, either side of the ball. Well, on offense, uh, they are spread offense like they've been, you know, for a long time. Uh, they've got four guys out there that can really fly. And, uh, um, you know, they can hurt you in a lot of different ways in the passing game. You know, they can throw a short route, make you miss, and then, you know, speed down the sideline for 50 extra yards. Uh, they can beat you deep. Um, their quarterback is, uh, you know, returning from last year, and he can throw it a mile. Um, uh, he is, uh, you know, he, he does a good job of running their offense, and uh, and so we're going to have to, you know, our secondary is going to be challenged tonight. Uh, this is by far the best uh, passing team that we have played um, to the, you know, to this point in the season. And um, and so it's going to be a great test for our secondary, um, you know. Then, but then they also, you know, are dangerous running the ball because just like we talk about us offensively wanting to make defenses uh, defend us honestly, well, you know, they force you to do that as well uh, because you can't you can't put everybody back there and you know and drop eight guys. Well, they 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 do a good job of running the football. Uh, but you can't put, you know, stack the box with eight guys because they're so good at throwing it. So uh, they make you defend the entire field, and that's what a good spread offense does. And uh, uh, so we're going to have to we're going to have to be great tacklers in space uh, because you know they spread you out and they and they, they force you to play in space. Uh, you know we've got to do a good job of uh, of uh, you know uh, controlling the line of scrimmage um, and trying to contain their run game and. Um, you know, uh, uh, and just play great team defense. Uh, defensively, they uh, they've changed up their scheme. They're they're more of a four three uh, this year. They were a four two five last year, uh, and they you know they try to use their athleticism and speed, um, you know, to create havoc in the box. They're you know uh, they they bring their linebackers quite often. Their defense, their two defensive tackles um, are the two best defensive tackles we've played against this year. Um, and, and one of those defensive tackles, they'll move them out to defensive end, and uh, they'll, they'll do different things. And so, 
uh, it's going to be a tremendous challenge for us tonight up front. Um, and uh, but I think our kids are, are are also ready for that challenge. But uh, um, you know they've got they got speed everywhere. Uh, doesn't matter uh, if it's uh, secondary, defensive ends, linebackers. Uh, they're going to have speed everywhere. And so we're going to have to we're going to have to execute and sustain drives. Um, you know, keep the ball out of their hands. You know, a, a, as best we can. And and uh, we got to take care of the football. That's always a key. Uh, but uh, like I said, I think that this is uh, it's going to be a great um, matchup between two good football teams, and uh, it's a great way to end up our non-district schedule. And it's going to be another um, another opportunity for us to grow as a football team and uh, get ourselves ready for a district race that will be starting up here pretty quick. Yeah, we had we had five years in a row that it was a one-point game. Yeah, we won four of the five. Yeah. So, but in any event, uh, that's you're, you're correct. It's, and uh, have they done anything different with their field? The, no, they they got a grass field. Their stadium is about the same. same okay. um, seem like they're grass. I'm, I'm not being sounds like I'm being negative, but it was always one of the worst grass fields. Seem like yeah. to me that we played on. You know, a lot of yeah. There, there's a uh, Bermuda. A lot of clumps of this and clumps of that. You there, know, it's, it of. has been that way. You know, at times. Um, you know, I thought when we went over there last year, it was a little better. bit better shape. Okay. Yeah, because we, uh, we went down there last year, so it was yeah. two years in a row, right? Yeah, it was better we than Ingleside's. Ingleside, That's true. No, Ingleside's yeah. was the worst. Ingles, Ingleside's was the worst. But, yeah. uh I just didn't uh, know if they'd put turf in or something. But they have not. No, okay. they have not. So, and, and that's going to be another factor. I mean, they have I don't know how much rain they've gotten. I know they've gotten rain this week, uh, and it is a grass field, so the condition of the field. And then, um, you know, there is, a, there is some rain in the forecast, so – uh, you know, so some of those elements that we talk about, you know, may be in play sure. as well. And uh, but we both play in it, so we'll we'll just have to deal with it as we go. You know, sports. Uh, I truly believe that in sports, uh, uh, you, you have momentum. Mm -hmm. you, know I mean? you know, you talk about momentum, and it looks like the Gobblers are gaining some momentum yeah. uh, over these last two weeks. Uh, yeah. Going to be facing a, a team that probably is trying to ramp up on some momentum too after sure. last week's victory so it should be a good game tonight yeah yeah it will be all right good luck coach hey, uh, thank you talk talk a little bit about uh what went on last night with uh well our uh our sub varsity's sub -varsity. uh yeah sub varsity's played last night our uh seventh grader our seventh and eighth grade played yokum and our seventh graders combined to one team because yokum only had one team uh and they won 28 to 8 uh had another great uh another great outing our eighth grade uh, won the uh, eighth grade white team game, and then our our green team uh, came up short, lost fourteen to eight. Uh, those kids are, you know, all all of our junior high kids are really playing hard and and a lot of fun to watch, and they're a lot of fun to coach. They're a lot of good good kids. And uh, Wharton did not have a JV team, so we played uh, a, a combined freshman JV, uh, so to speak, and uh, uh, won that game fifty to twenty four. Um, you know, did a lot of really good things, and uh, you know, our, our our freshmen and our and our JV kids have uh, have really had a good year to this point, and um, you know, they continued that last night. So, you know, that was really good. Um, our uh, in, in our other sports, uh, volleyball um, is going to be finishing up district play tonight. They play Poteet in Poteet. Uh, we're currently in a tie for third place in the district race and hopefully with a win tonight that will uh, uh, put us in third place uh, I think by ourselves if we were to uh, win the game tonight then we will start the second round of district next week um, and then uh, our cross country uh, gets back into action this weekend as well after uh, a rain out and then an open week so uh, a lot of things going on and uh, ought to be a good weekend. Ray you have anything? Still, still a lot going on and then of course y'all after tonight the football varsity football team y'all have the bye week next week we do we have a bye week next week and then district starts in bandera in, the following week in bandera that might as well be in another state as, yeah. far, as, <laughs> as far as far as yeah. it is to bandera so. yeah yeah all right well coach good luck tonight uh we we wish you the best of luck and uh, go gobblers yeah well thank you guys appreciate all right. it hello folks welcome to Wharton Tiger Stadium in Wharton, Texas, for the uh, tonight's matchup between the Coral Gobblers and the Wharton Tigers. 
Gobblers are uh, running out on the field, fixing to come through their run-through sign. We've got about six and a half minutes left before kickoff. Ray, it's a hot, humid night. Um, Gobblers, uh, what do they need to do tonight to, to get come away with this win? Well, if you listen to the coach's show, I think Wharton's going to try to throw the ball. I don't know if the conditions – it's not raining right now, but it's rained probably fairly heavily, I'm going to guess, maybe between 5.30 and 6.30, and that's kind of – Maybe a few drops falling right now, but up ball protection is going to be key. And I, I would predict in this kind of weather, the team that can run the ball the best is going to be the team that wins. Gobblers are going to be dressed in uh, green pants, white jerseys, and uh, green helmets. Wharton Tigers have not come out yet, but I uh, believe they're going to be in all blue with white helmets. and Kind of red, red and white stripes. Yep, yep. Gobbler's going to be looking to notch number, win number four this year. Wharton coming off a big victory uh, over uh, rival El Campo last week. Gobbler's come out on the field, led by the flag crew and the uh, the United States of America flag. So, uh, yeah, Mr. Keyran Grant's got the got the American flag. That's appropriate for somebody who's going to go play for a service academy. If you hadn't heard that, Kiran at this point at least is committed to go play running back for Army. So he will be a cadet at West Point this time next year. Clayton, let me run through. Uh, we got some guys back from injury, so let me run through kind of some starting lineups if anybody's out there and listening and interested in that. Uh, I, we'll hope, I hope there's people out there, there listening. listening. Yeah, we'll go offense first. Uh, wide receiver DeAndre Lang. Uh, Jordan Whittington will be back as one of the receivers uh, uh, tonight. Kieran Grant will be at running back. Robert Moore uh, will be at tight end. Michael Barter will be your quarterback. Kobe Giles will be uh, a tight end. Uh, Devin Whittington, another receiver. And the big guys up front, uh, Caden Jander, Scott Olsoski, Charles DeRowan, and Elijah Bernardo. So a couple names in there that we have not heard yet this year, and we'll pause for just a second for the playing of our national anthem, I believe. Uh, we'll keep talking. They're just Wharton's coming on the field, led by a big red flag with the tiger and a big black W on it. Defensively for the Gobblers tonight in the secondary, as we've said, Wharton was is known to throw the ball a lot, so the secondary will be important tonight. We've got DeAndre Lang, Jordan Whittington, Kieran Grant, uh, uh, Trent Haynes, and uh, linebackers uh, Lester Denby, uh, defensive end Robert Moore. Uh, Kayla Verner will be in the secondary. Kobe Giles will be at uh, a defensive end. Uh, Austin Swartz will be in the secondary. Martin West will be at a linebacker slot. And Elijah Vernado will be on the line. So there's your 11 on offense and your 11 on defense for the for the Gobblers tonight. Thank you, Ray. Now we'll do the uh, playing of the national anthem as the color guard comes out on the field.
right. Time for some football. Did you see what happened with the coin toys? Fixing to do it right now. Okay. Ray, one thing I noticed, uh, the Gobblers numbers are a whole lot more than the Wharton Tigers. Yeah, I, I, actu I actually counted. I did too. Okay. What number did you come up with? 35 for Wharton. There you go. And it's a little hard on the other side with our captain standing out front, but like 53, 54, almost 20 more for Quero. Gobblers are spread out from about 35 to 30, uh, 25 to 35, 35 one way, and Wharton is uh, 40 to 40, about 20 yards long. So Gobblers definitely have more numbers. Captains tonight for the Gobblers are Kieran Grant, Michael Barta, Brandon Nimick, and – can't tell who 20. that last one is. J.D. Nataro, isn't it? 28? No, no, uh, no? Ficklin, Justin Ficklin. Justin Ficklin, okay. I can't tell. I can see a two. 29, yeah. All right, Ray, what happened? Looks like Horton's won the toss. They're going to defer. So Quirrell will get the ball starting at what I would say would be the west end of the stadium. Maybe southwest end of the stadium headed to the north. Northeast. Because the sun is setting to our right, and we're going to be defending that goal. interesting clay uh, i know the weather was bad and we drove through some pretty hard rain getting here but i would say there's almost as many people here if not more people here from quarrel than there is from Morton. yep and ray we have a seven-man crew again tonight yes out of the houston chapter i heard him say before the game if you're listening to us out there shoot me a text 361-275-4163 we'll recognize you as listening we do appreciate our listeners. Deep for the Gobblers is going to be DeAndre Lang. It's one of those nights that the humidity is probably about 97%. And if you turn the AC on in the press box in about two minutes, you can't see out the window because of the condensation so bad. So, Marcus Gomez and DeAndre Lang are going to be deep for the Gobblers. The the lighting at this stadium, Ray, is not not, not the best. Up. Well, uh, on the Quarrel side, we're looking from the home press box across. There's <laughs> three. They only have a total of, let's see, eight, 24 bulbs, and three of the 24 are totally burned out. I mean, I can tell you right now, I, I'm not – the the gobblers on the sidelines you over could, there. You couldn't I, see a number. I, I, can't, I can't read a number very good. So right, yeah. we're going to do our best, folks. Hopefully we can just recognize them by their body language. <laughs> Yeah, at least Wharton's, Wharton's white, numbers stand out a little yeah, better. Yeah, white on the dark blue jersey is easier to read. All right, Gomez and Lang deep for the Gobblers, lined up at about their 10-yard, 5-yard line. Left-footed kicker for the Tigers. Yeah, yep. Line drive kick fielded by Gomez at about the 12-yard line. He reverses it to Lang around the right-hand side, gets out to the 25-yard line after being brought down. Gobblers are take, going to take over from there. Shout out to John Kanitka out at Stratton Road listening to us. Thank you, John. First and 10 quarrel at their 24-yard line. 12 yards on the return by Lang. Shotgun formation. Barta is your quarterback with uh, Grant lined up to the left of him. Trey Moore goes in motion. Throws out to the left flat to Jordan Whittington. Catches it down the Wharton sideline at the 40. Flags on the play. He's driven down at about the 47, 46 yard, 45 yard line. Excuse me. Flag on the play. Yeah, they're going to call holding on the wide receiver blocking, I believe. Yes, sir. So, good gain. Well, for, yeah, from the 24 out to the – they're going to give him the 30, the 35, but then they're going to mark it back 10 from the 35. 
Good gain nullified there, folks. Shout out to the Gomez family listening back in Quarrel. Thank you all very much. We appreciate it. You're going to put the ball back 10 yards from the spot of the foul, which is going to be first and nine. Nine. Well, em empty backfield shotgun formation. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Barta takes a snap, rolls to his right, looks downfield, throws. Caught by Lane. Great catch. Got the first down, down to about the 38-yard line. Nice pitch and catch there by Barta and Lang. Shout out to the Clarks cooking some uh, Mr. Streetle's pork steaks, listening to some Gobbler football. Thank you all very much, Clark family. Gobblers break the huddle. Shotgun formation. Grant lined up behind Barta. Two receivers to the left. Turns, hands off to Grant over the left-hand side. Big hole, closes quickly, short gain. Going to bring up second and eight. Yeah, Wharton's going to be quick on defense. Clay. It looked like there was a decent size hole there, but it closed in a hurry. Shotgun formation, two receivers to the right, one to the left. Grant lined up behind Barta. Barta drops straight back, throws out in the right flat. Caught by Whittington, up the middle, into Tiger territory, still going, dragging defenders down inside the 25-yard line. Big gain, Jordan Whittington. Just a, a wide receiver slip screen, and he took it right up the middle. And with his speed, folks, he uh, he was down the field quickly. First and 10, Quarrow deep in uh, Wharton Tiger territory. At the Wharton 22, 39-yard pickup. Yeah, they blitz a lot with their linebackers, so those kind of plays should be effective tonight. Screens and... Bart and a shotgun. Grant lines up behind him. Moore comes into the backfield. Turns, hands off to Grant, over the left-hand side. Big hole flag. down inside the 15-yard line flag on the play. I would think it's going to be on the defense because he didn't blow the whistle. Shout-out to Neil Schneider, listening from Houston, Texas. Go Mean Green. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it. Offsides. Oh, us. Us. Oh, no, him. Yeah, the referee corrected himself. I'd take the penalty. You want second and three or first and five? All right, it's going to be first and five for the Gobblers. Ball is going to be spotted at the 17-yard line of Wharton. If you're just joining us, 10-15 left to go in the first quarter. Zero to zero, zero. Gobblers are on the move. Three receivers split to the right. Lang, Haynes, and uh, Whittington. Albright lined up behind Barta. Turns hands off to Albright up the middle. Another big hole down inside the 15-yard line. Close to the first down, but didn't quite make it. Brings up second and two. Using Whittington a little more than I thought they were. Yeah, no, threw on, it to on him on offense. Yeah, threw it to him on the first play, and then about three plays later, he's two receptions for 50 yards in this drive. Wildcat formation. Grant is in a shotgun. Whittington goes in motion, pitches to Whittington. He gets bottled up in the backfield and uh, gets back to the original line of scrimmage. They were, they they had penetration, Ray. Yes. So actually, he's going to lose yardage. Bring up third and four. Shout out to the Kremlins in concrete listening. Thank you all very much. We appreciate it. Some personnel go out. Some new personnel come in. Gobblers break the huddle. Shotgun formation. Uh, Moore and Lang split out to the right. Grant lined up behind Barta. Moore comes, comes back into the uh, backfield. Barta turns, hands off to Grant over the left-hand side. He fights for yardage and may have gotten it, Ray. Yeah. Was hit, was hit at the line of scrimmage and, and fought to get extra yardage. And 
they're stopping the clock. This thing is right, right there on the on the button. So we're going to see what what they what they give us here. Referees talk about it as uh, lightning lights the uh, the sky to the left of us. Shout out to Leanne listening at work at the Quarrel Nursing and Rehab. Go Mean Green. Thank you, Leanne. We appreciate it. They're not moving the change right. I think it's going to be fourth and in inches. Oh, you went to the far side. Here he comes. Okay, they're measuring. I'm sorry. Yeah. The, the line judge took a while to get out there. To He had his little marker on the 20-yard line, so they're going to stretch it. About seven yards and see where we end up here. Miss Mrs. Lori Spears is listening to us uh, from her recliner back in Quaro. She said she's still on the injured reserve list. Yes. So th they it is a first down. Hi, Miss Lori. They haven't put her on the travel right, squad. Glad, so yeah. glad to have her. Listening. Thank you for listening. The Jaspers, Jasper Quintero Jr. and Senior, listening to us. Thank you very much, guys. We appreciate it. Hey, Jasper, for a small donation, we'll call it the starting lineup sponsored by Jasper. How's that? <laughs> he, he said he really enjoys the stats that you give, Ray. Yeah. So now we're glad you, you got one listening. person out there that at least no, enjoys us. There you go. No, he ain't. <laughs> first, first and ten, Quarrel. There we go. Gobblers break the huddle. Devin Whittington split to the right. Jordan Whittington and DeAndre Lang to the left. Shotgun formation. Grant. Lined up uh, next to Barta. Goes in a, in a slot. Hands off to Grant underneath. Down inside the five. Close to the to the first down marker. He's going to be a yard chart. He picked up nine. The offensive line is creating huge holes, folks. Uh, Grant and Albright have, have had huge holes to run through, so... That's a good sign to start this game off. Gobblers break the huddle. Barta in a shotgun surrounded by uh, Gobblers on either side of him and to the, to the back of him. Ball's on the ground. Barta picks it up. He's going to have to eat it. Uh, get, drop for a loss. Sh bad snap, Ray? I think he just hit him in the hands. I think he dropped it. I think statistically you call that a fumble. There's a flag in the backfield. Or, on our, or somebody who's a towel. Something's yeah. laying out there on the field. Yeah, it's a white towel. Loss of five. Going to bring up third and about six. They break the huddle with uh, two receivers to the right. Lang and Haynes. Grant lined up behind Barta. Moore in a slot, turns and hands off to Grant, tries to bounce it, balls on the ground again, folks. Wharton falls on it. Nope, it's still going around. The referees have not signaled anything yet. Now they do. Wharton recovers the, the, the gobbler fumble deep in Wharton Tiger territory. They will take over from there. So, Ray, there's that's what we were talking about earlier in the pregame and, and right before we came on, uh, taking care of the ball in these wet conditions. Yeah, kept, kept possession for five minutes. Ten plays. Advance the ball about 74 yards and come away with nothing. Shotgun formation, two receivers split to either side for the Warden Tigers. Quarterback takes a snap, hands off to the running back up the middle. Big gain out to about about seven yard gain on, on the first run there. Quarterback is Donovan Crushaw, 180 pound junior. So three receivers to the right, one to the left. Hands off to the running back up the middle. He tries to bounce it. Gets nothing, maybe a yard. Good job by Werner. Yeah, Caleb Werner, number 23. Along with the help of Trent Haynes, a uh, gain of about one. Going to bring up third and two. Wharton Tigers uh, come to the line, no huddle. Two to the left, two to the right. Quarterback takes a snap, drops straight back, looks, throws across the middle, fires, deflected by number 10, uh, Lester Denby. Yeah, that ball 
came across and took a nosedive into the <coughs> turf. They didn't tip it? I think they tipped it. No, yeah. I think I think it, that's what made it take a nosedive. Okay. Yeah, I agree right. with you. So it's going to bring up fourth and a long two. Crushall is also the punter. He's going to stay back there. Deep for the Gobblers is going to be Jordan Whittington. Lined up at about his 46-yard line. Flag on the play. Too many men on the field for Warden, I believe. That's what our neighbors, the, the Quarrel coaches, are saying. I'm only counting 11. They may pick this thing up. No flag. No flag they, yeah. they picked it up. Your math was better than his yeah, math. No. Well, I was trying to count both sides to make sure we didn't have 12, but by my count on our side, we've got 11 as well. All right, so Gobbler stand up get pretty good field position here if, if Whittington can cleanly field this thing. Oh, good snap. Just High kick. Here, 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 here. Short kick. Here, here, here. Takes a Wharton Tiger bounce. Down to about the uh, quarter 41 yard line. So, with 547 left to go in the first quarter, the score is 0 to 0. You're listening to Gobbler Football on KMAXSports.com. For over 40 years, the Quero All Sports Booster Club has been there to support all CISD athletics. The Quero All Sports Booster Club raises money throughout the year to assist the athletes in golf, volleyball, tennis, track and field, football, baseball, softball, and cross country. The Booster Club donates over $20,000 each year to support the athletes. Whether it's uniforms, sports equipment, or ice machines, the... All right, folks, back here at Gobbler Stadium. Two receivers to the right. Shotgun formation. Barta takes a snap, hands off to Grant. He bounces it, gets out, uh, out the right side. Uh, big gain for about seven yards. Nice run there to make something out of nothing for Kieran Grant. Going to be, be a gain of about six, so it's going to bring up second and four. Shout out to Justin Hilbrick listening uh, from work, working at the Republic of Texas Golf Club there in uh, San Antonio. Thank you, Justin. We appreciate it. Gobblers break the huddle. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. Barta turns, throws across the middle, caught by Jordan Whittington into Tiger territory down to about the 39-yard line. First down, Gobblers. Quick slant. He hit uh, Whittington on a quick slant um, and – Got the gobbler first down. 14 yards on the reception. Shout out to Bill and, and crew. Or they're listening at the Quarrel Country Club. Go Gobblers. Thank you all very much. If you're just joining us, it's 0-0. Zero zero. Gobblers second possession. 446 left to go in the first quarter. Devin Whittington and Marcus Gomez split out to the right. Nobody to the left. Shotgun formation. Grant lined up behind Barta. Turns. Hands off to Grant. Up the middle. Good fighting job. for yardage. Good hard run there by Kieran Grant. Thought he was down about two yards into it and, and, and kept his feet for a gain of about eight. eight. He's a very patient runner. He, you know, he doesn't get in a hurry. He you know stood there and let the lineman move somebody, and then he's got that quick explosion, that quick first step. Shout out to Glenn and Sherry Portis and Quarrow listening to, uh, to us on their iPad. Thank you all very much. We appreciate it. Gobbers, break the huddle. Jordan Whittington, DeAndre Lang to the right. Devin Whittington to the left comes in motion to the right. Now we got trips. Barta turns, throws to the right, caught by Jordan Whittington, down to about the 20-yard line, first down, Gobblers. Just some quick hitters, Ray. Right. Um, you know they're 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 respecting our speed out there on the, on the corners, and that's allowing us to just turn and throw the ball out there, and you you know make some yards after catch. Pick up of eleven in the first half. I think a good job there. You know, you generally receivers are taught to catch a ball in their hands, but on a night like tonight, he just kind of cradled that. You know, what I'm saying, caught it in his gut and had time to then make his move. Two two receivers to the left, Barta in a shotgun formation. Takes the snap, hands off to Grant, oh, uh, cut down in the backfield, gets it back, back to the original line of scrimmage. He had open space, folks. One Tiger tripped him up, 
gain of one, second and nine. Ball at the uh, Wharton 19-yard line. Shout out to Marianne Walford listening in, in from Quero. Thank, I, I think that's Marianne Walford. Maybe it's Marianne Koenig. But anyway, Marianne's listening to us there in Quero. Thank you, Marianne. We appreciate it. Shotgun formation. Albright lined up behind Barta. Turns and hands off to Albright. Over the left-hand side. He, penetration. Cut down in the backfield. Loss on the play. The Tigers had that thing red. Met him at the mesh point and dropped him for a loss of about four. Brings up third and 13. The ball has been pushed out to the 22-yard line, 23-yard line. Shotgun formation, two to the right, one to the left. Empty backfield. Barta is your only back. He rolls to his right. He's pursued. Throws downfield. Got a wide open man. Touchdown. Jordan Whittington. Good job by Michael Barta. Yes. Got rid of that thing just in time as number 51 for the Tigers was about to corral him and and take him to the ground. Threw it to a wide open Jordan Whittington in the right side of the end zone. Touchdown, Gobbers. That touchdown brought to you by Brian Gomez State Farm Insurance. Swinging gate formation lined up for the Gobblers. Jordan Whittington is your quarterback out there. They look to the sidelines, and now they shift to the traditional formation. Isaiah Munguia comes in to do the kicking duties. Good snap, good hold, and good kick. So with 154 left to go in the first quarter, the Gobblers lead 7-0. You're listening to Gobbler Football on KMAXSports.com. Energy Waste has provided surface rental equipment to the oil field and construction industry since 1986. Energy Waste is proud to have been recognized as a three-time winner in community and social investment by South Texas Energy Economic Roundtable. Energy Waste is a proud supporter of all Puero ISD athletic programs and all of the supporting organizations and would like to remind you, once a gobbler, always a gobbler. All right, folks, we're back here at Tiger Stadium. Gobblers lead 7 to nothing on a bar to, to Jordan Whittington touchdown reception as the Gobblers prepare to kick this thing off. Shout out to the to the Gobblers uh, from Doyle Cruz and Otwood Brown. They're, they Ray, they, they say it's pouring rain back in Quarrow. So. Oh, wow. Wow. Joe and Brenda Simmons. A retired veteran listening to us from Bainbridge, Georgia. Thank you all very much. We appreciate it. Isaiah Munguia set to kick this thing off. A short, high kick. Gobblers gobblers fall on it. I don't know if that was planned or not, but he kicked that thing a mile high, a mile high, high, high straight up about, and it went about 15 yards. The Wharton Tigers were not prepared for it. The, the Gobblers were. They fell on it. First and ten, Quero at the Wharton 41, 41 yard line. So just a 19 yard kick, but they didn't they didn't get to it before it hit the ground. Mm-hmm. And the kickoff when it hits the ground is live no, ball. no telling where it's going to go. Yep, but the spin. That thing back, uh, like a like a pitching wedge, went in there and sucked back toward the gobbler uh, kickoff team, and uh, here we go. Shotgun formation. Barda is your quarterback. Turns, fakes, looks downfield, throws. Got a man wide open. Jordan Whittington caught. Holy cow, folks! He went up over the Wharton Tiger for a gobbler touchdown. Uh, he was pretty well defended. Ben, right? No, he was. He just went. That's just a better athlete going up and getting the ball. And he, he's obviously bigger than number 21 for Wharton, who is Keyjohn Waddle. Waddle. But, yeah, he probably has four or five inches, and he just out-jumped him. That touchdown brought to you by Brian Gomez State Farm Insurance. That, that quick strike touchdown, one-play one drive. Isaiah Munguia comes in to kick the extra point. Good snap, good hold, and this one's no good. He pushed it to the right. 
So with 142 left to go in the first quarter, the score is Quail 13, Wharton 0. You're listening to Gobble Football on KMAXSports.com. When your AC stops working, it doesn't care what time it is. Call GVEC Home for emergency AC repair day and night. GVEC has over 40 years of experience in air conditioning service, plus fully stocked highwear parts and background check professionals you can trust in your home. Serving your needs 24 hours per day, 7 days per week is what we do. Call 800-328-0630. Texas AC License, B016098E. All right, folks, back here at uh, Tiger Stadium. Gobbler's up 13 to nothing. Shout out to Ted Brazil and Derek Ross listening back in Quarrel. Thank you all very much. We appreciate it. Another high kick. Caught by the Warden Tiger, hit hard at the third. Oh, he falls on the ground. We pick it up. We pick it up, folks. It was a high. Oh, they're gonna say he was down. High pooch kick. Whatever. When he got hit, the ball the ball went 15 yards. A high pooch kick, uh, similar to what uh, we were doing against Gonzalez last week. Just kind of pinning him over there in that in, on that gobbler sidelines. The Wharton Tiger did not fair catch it. The the Quarrel Gobbler don't know what number that was, but he laid the wood on the kid. Ball fell on the ground. Uh, looks like they called him down. Wharton takes it. As I'm going to say no gain on that. I mean, he, got, no. he, he tried to take a step, and as soon as he tried to take a yeah, step. Right there on the 25-yard line is where uh, yeah. Munguia laid that thing. Got a timeout, uh, Wharton. Yeah, Wharton's got to be reeling a little bit yeah. right now. This yeah. may be, come on, guys, let's get our heads clear. No, just a contrast in two drives. I mean, three possessions. First possession, like we said, we had the ball uh, – 10 plays, moved it from our own 24 all the way to the Wharton 3, and then ended up losing the fumble back out to the 18 with no points. Second drive covered uh, 59 yards in six plays, and then the third drive was one play, 41 yards. You know, this offense has the potential for a quick strike, and uh, you're seeing that tonight, so. Shout out to Eric Quintero, listening to Gobble Football in Las Vegas. Nevada. Eric, good to hear from you, man. Thanks for listening. Yeah, we're, we're sitting next to the Coral coaches up here, so you all may hear some stuff during the game, hear some excitement, but uh, they're telling everybody, here comes a stop and go. Wharton's going to try to get it back in one play. Two receivers split to either side, shotgun formation. Quarterback takes a snap, nope. hands off to the running back, tries to get it on the left-hand side, gets about three yards out out uh, to about the 28-yard line. Yeah, we rolled a safety to this side with the Twins. Jordan Whittington coming over in case they tried to go deep, but they gave it to number five for a short game. Same formation, two to the left, two to the right, shotgun formation, quarterback, takes a snap, looks to his left, throws downfield, got a man wide open, caught, pushed out of bounds by... I Austin, think, Austin Schwartz yeah. in Gobbler ter- into Gobbler territory. First and ten, Wharton at the Quarrel 47-yard line. Not sure if that was a blown coverage or not, but he was going down the Gobbler sidelines wide open. Schwartz comes over there, makes the play, 22. pushes him out of bounds. 25-yard pickup. Two to the left, two to the right, shotgun formation for the Tigers. Quarterback takes his hand off up the middle, big hole, down to the 30, still going down to the 20. Pushed out of bounds at about the 14-yard line. Big gain, Wharton Tigers. Number one, isn't it? Number one. Not on the program. Don't know his name, but no, number two, Ray. Number two, thank you. Yeah, Christian Wynn. Two to the left, two to the right. Shotgun formation. Quarterback turns the same play. Bottles up this time. Gets back to the original line of scrimmage. Joe Cardenas, along with Martin West, second and ten. Up 
Tigers have not come out of this formation. Two to the left, two to the right with a shotgun. Running back goes in motion, empty backfield. Quarterback takes a snap, drops straight back, looks to his left. He's flushed, throws into the end zone, incomplete. Can't tell who that defender was. Kieran. Kieran Grant was there. Nice bam bam play there to knock that thing away. The receiver was open for just a split second. Grant broke on it, knocked it away. Brings up third and ten. 16 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. Quarterback takes a snap, drops straight back, looks to his right, throws across the middle, caught into the end zone for a touchdown. One of those three receivers to the right just ran a uh, crossing pattern, wide open, caught the pass into the end zone. Touchdown, number Wharton. Six, number seven caught it? Number four. four. Number four. Kevin Knight caught that touchdown pass for the Warden Tigers as they attempt the extra point with 11 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Christopher Martinez is the kicker. Line drive kick through the uprights. Good. That brings the score to Quero 13, Wharton 7. So, Ray, just like Coach Reeve said, you know, Wharton – you know, they'll, they'll lull you to sleep with the, with those uh, runs, and, but they've got a good passing attack. Yeah, that was just they kind of brought a guy on a slant. Quarrel was, I believe, playing zone, and the, the safety just was deeper. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Caught it underneath the safety, but when you're on the 14-yard line, you can't you can't very well let somebody catch it underneath the safety. So for Warden, one, two, three, four, five, six plays covered 75 yards, and it only took them um, a minute and – 31 seconds. Give Marianne Koenig the uh, recognition that she need, She I should have given her earlier. That That's who's listening back in Quarrel. Marianne, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Christopher, Christopher Martinez set to kick this thing off. Deep for the Gobblers is Lang and uh, Munoz. I'm sorry, not Munoz. Gomez. Fielded by Gomez at the 16-yard uh, line. He, he fump bobbles it, picks it up, tries to make something happen. He's going, still going, folks, down the gobbler sideline. Uh, corralled out of bounds at about the 36-yard line. Nice return there following the uh, the bobble of the uh, kickoff. Because yeah, he got it from down about the 15 all the way out to the 35. Shout out to the Pena family listening back in Quarrow. Thank you all very much. We appreciate it. Gobblers break the huddle with uh, Lang and uh, Devin Whittington to the, to the left. Barta takes a high snap, hands off to Grant. Big hole up the middle. About eight-yard gain there by Kieran Grant. Quarter. They're going to give him a nine-yard gain, so it's going to bring up second and one as the first quarter ends with the score being Quero 13, Wharton 7. You're listening to Gobbler Football on KMAXSports.com. For over 40 years, the Quero All Sports Booster Club has been there to support all CISD athletics. The Quero All Sports Booster Club raises money throughout the year to assist the athletes in golf, volleyball, tennis, track and field, football, baseball, softball, and cross country. The Booster Club donates over $20,000 each year to support the athletes. Whether it's uniforms, sports equipment, or ice machines, the Quero All Sports Booster Club is there. The Quero All Sports Booster Club meets every Wednesday at Davis Contractors, located on FM 236. Become a member and help us help our kids. Clay, in the, in the, fir in the first quarter, Jordan Winnington had six receptions for 138 yards in the first quarter. Yep, that's... Uh Good numbers there for somebody that's been out for right, yeah. four weeks. Shout out to Lewis Lockwood listening to us out in Midland. Th Go Gobblers. Thank you, Lewis. We appreciate it. 
Also give a shout out to Elroy and Doris Molina listening to the broadcast. Thank you all very much. Gobblers uh, break the huddle from the sidelines, come straight to the line of scrimmage. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Grant lined up behind Barta. Now he shifts to the side of Barta, shotgun formation. Turns and hands off to Grant on a delay, and he's cut down in the backfield for a loss of four. Going to bring up third and five. These guys don't give much forward progress because, I mean, he got hit and knocked back two, you know what I'm saying, yeah. two yards. I mean, he was stumbling and going backwards. Actually, it's going to be bring up third and four with a loss of four. Two receivers to the left, shotgun formation. Barta is your quarterback. Takes the snap, rolls to his left, looks downfield, throws quick. Caught oh. by Devin Whittington amongst uh, Man, that a was, group of Tigers. That was right between two defenders. Yeah. I thought he was going to throw to the guy on the outside, and he threw to the guy on the inside, so the outside defender had a chance to you know step to the inside kind of as the ball was coming, and it just found a little hole and got to Devin. First and 10 quarter at the uh, Wharton 41-yard line. Good job by Devin and a good job by Barta. From the 41 all the way to the 41. So Gomez and Devin Whittington to the right. Grant lined up behind Barta. High snap fielded by Barta. Handed off to Grant over the left-hand side. He dives over for a big gain. Eight-yard gain there by Kieran Grant. Ball is going to be on the Wharton 33, second and two. Empty backfield, shotgun formation, three receivers to the right. Barta takes a snap, rolls to his right. High, oh, good high pass, caught by Whittington. He sheds the tackler, gets the first down. Nice uh, throw and catch there. Give a shout out to the Lady Gobbler volleyball team. They're listening to uh, to the broadcast after putting Poteet away tonight. Good job in, in three sets. They beat Poteet tonight, 25-15, 25-21, and 25-19. So good job, ladies. That brings their record to three and three in district. So uh, nice job. Here we go. Two receivers to the left. Wildcat formation. Grant. Looks to throw it, keeps it himself, cuts up the middle, gain of about four. That was one of those. Whittington was supposed to go across his face before Key ran. The timing was off. He ended up running before the fake went by. Shout out to John Eric Rodriguez and his wonderful fiance Ashley, listening in Yoakum tonight, p picking out engagement pictures. Congratulations, you two. Thanks for listening. Brings up second and eight. Gobbers come to the line. Three receivers to the two to the right, one to the left. Now Moore comes into the slot formation. Barta takes the snap, looks downfield, throws high high pass caught by Jordan Whittington, uh, taken down immediately on a slant route. That's one of those kind of on those slants or quick screens. You know, if you can hit the guy in stride, but yeah. if he has to adjust and jump or the which, ball's behind him, which it Which blows. he had to do right there, yeah. And I'm not being critical. It just it was it, – it, it blows up the timing and you make one yard instead of making eight or ten or a touchdown. Shout out to Lou Pena listening to us in Dumas, class of 1972. Lou, thank you. We appreciate it. 8.40 left to go in the half. Gob Gobbler's up 13-7 to seven in Wharton territory. Three receivers to the left. Shotgun with Grant lined up behind Barta. Barta takes a snap, looks to his left, throws. Not sure who he was throwing it to, one of the two Whittingtons. But he caught it. But he caught it. Nice catch there by Jordan to lay out to, and catch that thing. It was way behind him. It was, was it Whittington? I'm sorry. It's so far over there in the corner. It was, it was Jordan. Jordan. Okay. Yes. Thank you. First and 10, Quero at the uh, – 12-yard line, 11-yard line. Picked up 11 on that. 
Barda in a shotgun. Albright lined up behind him. Haynes goes in motion in a slot formation. Turns hands off to Albright up the middle. Hit oh, hard, still on his feet. Running. Inside the five, down to about the two or three. Nice tough run in there by Chance Albright. Picked up seven. They're going to spot him at the four. Brings up second and three. Shotgun formation. Uh, Albright lined up behind Barta. Barta takes a snap. Hands off to Albright. Up the middle. Touchdown. Cuts in over the goal line. Touchdown. That a boy. Good job by the line. Horton stunts a lot, and if you get, you know, if they guess wrong, and your lineman does his job, you're gonna have a pretty good hole. That touchdown brought to you by Brian Gomez State Farm Insurance. Nice uh, drive there, put together by the Gobblers. Isaiah Munguia set to kick the extra point. Good snap, good hold, and uh, the kick is good. The holder, the holder being Trey McNary. It has been Haynes the last couple of weeks, so uh, that brings a score to Quarrow 20, Wharton 7 with 7.16 left to go in the half. You're listening to Gobbler Football on KMAXSports.com. Energy Waste has provided surface rental equipment to the oil field and construction industry since 1986. Energy Waste is proud to have been recognized as a three-time winner in community and social investment by South Texas Energy Economic Roundtable. Energy Waste is a proud supporter of all Quero ISD athletic programs and all of the supporting organizations and would like to remind you, once a gobbler, always a gobbler. All right, folks, we're back here at Tiger Stadium. Quarrel Record is your source for all local news. Go visit thequarrelrecord.com or find them on Facebook. The Quarrel Record is a gold sponsor of the Quarrel Gobbler All Sports Booster Club. Munguia set to kick this thing off following the Chance Albright touchdown. Score being 20 to 7 in favor of the Gobblers. High pooch kick, fielded at about the 30-yard line by the Tiger. He goes up the sidelines and gets driven out of bounds at about the 43. Munguia in on that tackle along with uh, Schwartz and Martin West. Tigers come to the line first and 10 at their 43-yard line. Two receivers split to either side in a shotgun formation. Quarterback takes a low snap, hands off, flags on the, fla flags on the play. Qu running back is still going. He's slung down by Lester Denby. See what the call is. Uh, offsides, uh, offsides, uh, quarrel. Wharton coach is uh, trying to figure out what he wants to do with this penalty. Still haven't decided what they want to do. It's fine with me. I'm still catching up. <laughs> <laughs> so he declined the penalty, took the yardage. He's going to bring up second and three. Ball spotted right at the 50-yard line. Two receivers split to either side. Referee motions for the uh, play clock to start. Mm. 
Now we can get play resumed. Quarterback takes a snap, hands off to the running back up the middle. Big game, making people miss it. inside Gobbler territory at the 40. Down inside the 35. Nice run there by number five for the Wharton Tigers. Big run. Uh, Going to be spotted at the Quarrow 32-yard line. Forced out of bounds by the Quarrow secondary. Schwartz, Grant. Same formation. Running back lined up to the left of the quarterback. Shotgun. Turns, throws to the right. Caught. Wide receiver screen, making people miss down inside the 20-yard line. Nice uh, play there by the Warden Tigers. Just a quick pass out to the right flat. Uh, one of the receivers blocked the DB, and the uh, receiver that caught the ball got the ball down inside the 20-yard line. First and 10, Wharton. Quarterback takes a low snap, hands off to the running back up the middle. Big hole. for Kobe. for Kobe. Big hole. Five yard gain. Four yard gain. Excuse me. Going to bring up second and six. Looks like the Wharton uh, offensive line is controlling this line of scrimmage right about now. They're right guards at the little bitty guy for a lineman. Yeah, he is. But he got, he got a big center. Yeah, he got they? a big center and a big tackle. Quarterback takes a snap. Is flushed. Getting thrown down by Trent Haynes. Yeah. I'm sorry, Trey Moore. Excuse me. Trey Moore got in there uh, quickly. Sacked the quarterback. Big loss. Third and 14. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. Shotgun formation, quarterback takes the snap, hands off to the running back. He tries, he tries to bounce it, and Trey Moore said no from the backside. He came from his backside uh, linebacker defensive end position and, and tackled the running back over on the opposite side of the field. Fourth and long. Fourth and... 14, more than 14, fourth and about 19. Quarterback takes the snap, drops straight back, looks, throws, hit as he throw, hits it, and it's caught in the end zone for a touchdown. Wow. Quarterback was hit as he as he threw it. Uh, the the receiver caught it falling down in the in the left corner of the end zone. The defender was Jordan Whittington. Touchdown, Warden Tigers. Their PA announcer is an excitable fella. Yeah. Christopher Martinez set to kick this extra point right through the uprights. So, folks, with 438 left to go in the half, that brings the score to Quarrel uh, 20. Wharton 14, you're listening to Gobbler Football on KMAXSports.com. High school coverage on the radio is a lot like Tinder. Hi, lover boy. One flick of the finger and we're gone. Goodbye now. The only difference is you're not going to meet your phone at the bar go out on a date with it. You are sick. At least I hope not. I mean, come on. But I do believe it was Kevin Garnett who said, This is the KMAX Sports Network. Devon Energy is proud to support the Quero High School Gobblers and all DeWitt County High School athletes. From our team to yours, good luck this season, both on the field and in the classroom. Devon Energy Corporation, Eagle Ford. Vite Media is the state's most comprehensive high school sports media outlet covering UIL, private schools. Vipe has been in Texas for over a decade. Visit their website at Vipe, V-Y-P-E, Texas.com. And also pick up your Vipe magazine today. Get in the game with Vipe Media. All right, folks, back here at Tiger Stadium. Gobber set to receive this uh, kickoff following the Wharton touchdown. How long was the play, Ray? 26-yard uh, completion, Clarence Branch from Crucial, the quarterback. Gomez and Lang are deep for the Gobblers, lined up at about their 14-yard line. Yeah. 
High kick fielded by Gomez at the 20. Making people miss. He's got, uh, he reversed the field. Got some, got some room out to the 40, out to the 50. Forced out of bounds at the Wharton 49-yard line. Nice return there by Marcus Gomez. Uh, fielded that thing like a shortstop field. A, 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 line, uh, about the 20 a grounder. 20-yard line, you think? Right at the 20. 20 that's what I thought. Shout out to the Aguilars listening uh, to us. Uh, Primo, Albert, um, Joe, and Thomas, and their dad, Eliseo. Thank you all very much. We appreciate it. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Shotgun formation for Barta. Grant lined up to the left of him. Now he goes into the slot. Barta takes a snap, hands off to Grant underneath. Met in the backfield and is hit hard and driven back for a loss. Wow. About six Tigers met him. Loss on the play of about two. Second and 12. Ball is now spotted on the Quarrel 49-yard line. Gobblers need to answer this, uh, that Wharton touchdown, Ray. Yeah, because Wharton's going to get the ball to start the second half, yep, too. Yep, Now we got a well, timeout. Time Remember to call Titan Electric and Contracting for all your construction needs. Look up Titan Electric on Facebook. They are locally owned and operated. City Mortgage is a proud supporter of the Quarrel Gobblers. Branch manager Randy Smith is a longtime supporter of the Quarrel Gobblers. Loan officer Jack Smith, I'm sorry, Zach Smith, is a former Quarrel Gobbler. Call them and they will make your home uh, loan worry and stress free. Give them a call at 361 576 9890 or visit them at citymortgagegroup.net. And don't forget, the, the Athletic Booster Club still has radio sponsorship ads available to purchase. You can call Mike Cantu or uh, for that for that information. I don't have his number handy, but I will get that for you. Gobbers come to the line. Three receivers to the left. Justin Ficklin comes in off the field late. Moves out to the right side. Comes into motion in a slot. Bart in a shotgun. Takes the snap. Hands off to Grant. He tries to bounce it. Got, gets back to the original line of scrimmage. Maybe a gain of one past that. So it's going to bring up set, uh, third and nine. Third and ten, excuse me. Two receivers to the right. Barta and a shotgun. Grant lined up next to him. Barta takes the snap, rolls to his right, looks downfield, throws. Caught by Whittington inside the 40-yard line. Good enough for a gobbler first down. He does a real – Whittington does a real good job of creating space, by, but doesn't shove with his hands. I mean, he, he puts his body into the guy, you know, when he runs into him. Mm -hmm. He gets the guy's momentum moving backwards then when he stops. But, you know, if you shove and extend your arms – they're going to call offensive pass interference, but he, he accomplishes the same thing without extending his arms. That's his 10th reception of the first half. <laughs> Two receivers to the left. Hands off to Grant. He bounces it to the left-hand side. Now he reverses field up the middle, cut down close to the first down marker. Grant slow getting up. Took a hard hit there. Going to be first and ten. Quarrow. Shout out to the Cuzzes and Nixon. Uh, you know who you are. Thank you, Cuz. 
bringing that to my attention. My bad. Two receivers to the left. Hand off to Grant up the middle. Big gain. Five-yard gain. Big hole there created by the interior line of the Gobblers. You know, an important thing here, Clay, is, and I'm glad we're still running the ball, we got two timeouts left, but you don't want to score and give them a minute and a half. They'll go right back down the field. Yep, you're right, Ray. Minute 38 and counting. Ball spotted at the 23-yard line of Wharton. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Bart in a shotgun. Takes a snap on the ground. He picks it up, falls on it. Big loss there by uh, the Gobblers on that, that bad uh, exchange. Have some uh, extra extracurricular after the play there. Referees were nowhere to be seen. Now they finally show up and separate them. Where are they going to spot this thing? At the 34. Inside 34 and a half. And so that was a loss of yep. 11. That's the second time tonight we've had a just a shotgun snap that wasn't you know wasn't fielded or caught. Yep, that, the one on the first drive yeah, cost yeah. us, and then that exchange, that exchange. Two to the right, one to the left, empty backfield. Bart is your in a shotgun formation. Takes the snap, rolls to his right, looks, throws downfield, got a man, picked yeah. off, picked off by the Wharton Tiger, going down the Wharton sidelines. Now he's reversing field at the 50. Now we got a flag back here in the uh, secondary. Yeah, I think we're going to have pass interference over here. There's, uh, there's two flags on the play. Or it could be something on the return. Well, one official signaling an eligible receiver downfield. He's tapping the top of his head. Forty-six seconds left to go in the half. See what the referees uh, decide here. Illegal procedure against the Gobblers. Okay, a block in the back against Wharton. So the the interception will stand. But they're going to move this thing back to the 15-yard line, first and 10, Wharton. Got a ball sitting out here on the 50 where he was tackled. They're going to get it now. Wharton's going to take over at their 15-yard line with 46 seconds left to go in the half. Tigers come to the line. Two receivers to the left, two to the right. Shotgun formation. Wharton does have two timeouts. They're waiting on getting the. Hey, they got to fix the clock. Yeah, the clock is sh showing 40, 49 minutes. 49 minutes. It needs to say 49 seconds, probably. Or somewhere around that. Folks, we're just waiting on them to get the clock right. Yeah. 
So they're not they can't get the scoreboard to reset, so they're gonna keep they're gonna they keep, keep it keep on the, the clock field. on the field. All right, here we go. Two receivers split to either side. Forty nine seconds left to go. Now the clock's working. Quarterback hands off to the running back. He's bottled up in the backfield by big number. And they're not calling timeout, so they're going to be content to go to the half. Elijah Varnado. Yep, Wharton's taking their time. They're not going to want to run another play. They take the snap and take a knee, and they're going to run this thing out. And that is the that is going to be the end of the uh, first half, folks. With Quora leading twenty to fourteen, you're listening to Gobbler Football on KMAXSports.com. Lance Tire Service is your one-stop shop for tires, brakes, alignments, and general automotive repair. They offer 24-hour road service for passenger vehicles, light trucks, agricultural, ATVs, industrial, and light commercial. They've moved to a new location, 1003 West Heaton on Highway 72 in Quero. Stop by and visit with Clayton and Clifford. Their friendly staff is always ready to assist you with any questions you may have. If nothing else, stop by to visit with Clayton's trusty dog, Cleo. Check out their website at lancetireservice.net. You can get a quote, see promotions, shop tires, and look at services offered. Lance Tire is a proud gold sponsor of the Quero Gobblers All Sports Booster Club. Give them a call at 361-275-2387. Lance Tire Service. Anytime, anywhere. We'll be there. For over 40 years, the Quero All Sports Booster Club has been there to support all CISD athletics. The Quero All Sports Booster Club raises money throughout the year to assist the athletes in golf, volleyball, tennis, track and field, football, baseball, softball, and cross country. The Booster Club donates over $20,000 each year to support the athletes. Whether it's uniforms, sports equipment, or ice machines, the Quero All Sports Booster Club is there. The Quero All Sports Booster Club meets every Wednesday at Davis Contractors, located on FM 236. Become a member and help us help our kids. Energy Waste has provided surface rental equipment to the oil field and construction industry since 1986. Energy Waste is proud to have been recognized as a three-time winner in community and social investment by South Texas Energy Economic Roundtable. Energy Waste is a proud supporter of all Quero ISD athletic programs and all of the supporting organizations and would like to remind you, once a gobbler, always a gobbler. High school coverage on the radio is a lot like Tinder. Hi, lover boy. One flick of the finger and we're gone. Goodbye now. The only difference is you're not going to meet your phone at the bar go out on a date with it. You are sick. At least I hope not. I mean, come on. But I do believe it was Kevin Garnett who said, This is the KMAX Sports Network.
Hey, where's the jetpack? The jetpack? Yes. It's uh. It's, it's on the ground. It's actually the jetpack. personnel only. are led this year by Captain Kerry Olson, who's on the injured Are list, and I'm Paul yeah. on crutches. First Lieutenant Haley Garcia, Lieutenants Jada Gardner, Aaliyah Ramirez, and Marissa Reyna. Social officers are President Tori Mitchell, Vice President Alex Heyman, and Secretary Aaron Mendez. I can't accept that. I think that's different. I think it's Vice President is Aaron, and Secretary is Alex. Outstanding stars for this week are Rebecca Cruz and Sierra Hurst. Okay. All right, folks, we're back here at halftime. Gobbler's leading 20 to 14. Got about 10 minutes left to go in the half. Ray, talk to me. That's an interesting set of numbers. Uh, Probably the biggest one that jumps out to me. Time of possession, 17.52 for Quero, six minutes and eight seconds for Wharton. Basically, two bad snaps have killed, not a bad snap, two mishandled snaps. I mean, bobbled snaps out of the shotgun have cost us cost us two drives. Quero has not yet punted. 
I don't know that you can really say. I guess you can say Wharton got the interception when that was because it was third and eighteen after the bad after the bad. Just an underthrown un, uh, under, underthrown ball. Yeah. When a guy was a guy was open deep, but uh, let's see here. The only thing I didn't do was one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. First downs. Quero twelve. Wharton was six. Rushing, neither team could get anything going on the ground. Clay Quero, 22 carries for 43 yards. Now, of course, you know, when you get the bad snaps, you know, we had about minus 15, 18 yards. You thought I'm saying on two snaps, and you had the fumble that was minus eight that we lost. Uh, but uh, so 22 for 43 for Quero, for Wharton, 12 for just 28 yards. I mean, so we've done a good job shutting down their, their running game. Doesn't seem like that. You would think they have more. Yeah, but, you know, because they a couple they, of quarterback snacks and sacks in there, and several three yard, and five yard losses. Yeah, uh, passing this because is, they have gotten off some some pretty right, large runs. runs. Uh, this is incredible for a high school game on a soggy. You know, it's not raining anymore, but everything's damp and wet. But Coral was twelve of thirteen. So up until the interception, we were twelve of twelve throwing mm -hmm. the ball. So twelve of thirteen. I did not realize with that. one pick. Wharton was four of six with no interceptions. Quirrell never punted. Uh, Wharton punted one time for 33 yards. Uh, I guess big turn, big difference too here. Quirrell fumbled it three times, and lost it once. So we had one fumble lost and one turn uh, interception. So we had two turnovers, and uh, Wharton didn't have any. No fumbles lost and no interceptions. Uh, relatively clean penalty game. Quirrell one for ten. Wharton one for five. Uh, Quirrell did a good job on kickoff returns. Three returns for 63, 63 yards. Wharton only had uh, two returns for 13 yards and 10 yards of return yardage on the interception. Uh, again, another di big difference that could come back uh, to be of a major factor later in the second half. Quirrell did miss an extra point, so we're two of three on PATs, and Wharton was two for two. Third down conversions, Quirrell five of seven. Wharton one of three, so Quirrell did a very good job of moving the sticks. Uh, Wharton was one of one on fourth down, which of course was one of their two, one of their two touchdowns. And again, the last stat I keep on here is time of possession. Quirrell 17 minutes and 52 seconds to Wharton's uh, 608. So three to one Quirrell uh, in in time of possessions. I don't know Clay that I've ever done a Quirrell game where we had one receiver with 10 receptions and a half. But Jordan Whittington uh, comes back off of his injury, missing the first four games of the year, to have 10 receptions for 169 yards and two touchdowns. And we didn't even think he was going to play offense. Yeah, right. we thought he was going to pretty much just play defense. Uh, <coughs> DeAndre Lang, one reception for 12. Devin Whittington, one big one for 18 that moved the sticks. Rushing, Kieran Grant, 15 carries for 50 yards. He's been the workhorse. Chance Albright, four for 10. He did have the rushing touchdown. But here, you know, you had uh, Jordan Whittington one for minus one, and uh, Albright had minus five and minus 11 on the two snaps. You feel what I'm saying? That were mishandled where he just has to go back and fall on, fall on the ball. So two for minus 16. Uh, uh, you said Albright, you mean Barta. I, Barta, I keep doing that. I'm sorry. Michael Barta. Yeah, so Barta was 12 of 13, one interception for 199 yards and two TDs. On the Wharton side, uh, the leading rusher for, for Wharton was – to Brayland Phoenix, who had eight carries for 34 yards, and then uh, Kristen Wynn had two carries. Uh, here's a here's a error on my part. I thought I scr scratched that number out. He's the one who had the long run. Uh, Kristen Wynn. It was 33 yards, and I had it down for three. So really, there. So they have 58. 12 for 58. Okay. 12 for 58. Uh, just four receptions. Uh, Number seven, uh, Jarrell Davis, two for 38 yards. And then uh, Kevon Knight had a one for 14 and a touchdown. And the big fourth down reception was by Clarence Branch for 26 yards. It converted a fourth and, uh, let's see, I believe it was fourth and 17. And they converted for 26 yards, uh, 26 yards and a touchdown. Uh, and so their, their passer, uh, quarterback, uh, Chriselle Donovan Chriselle was four of six, uh, no interceptions, and uh, 78, 78 yards. Uh, in the other, in the sub varsity uh, results uh, yesterday, 
Uh, Wharton did not have a JV and a freshman. They played a combined game, came to Quero, and uh, the Gobblers were victorious in that game by a score of uh, 50 to 24. And uh, back to what we've said, the, the, the JV I don't think is given. They've played two games where teams have scored, but I've been told that the, the touchdowns have come against the freshmen, like somebody else's JV scoring on Quero's freshman defense. So. I think the JV, truly the JV defense is still pitching a shutout through five through five games. Uh, uh, in the uh, junior high games yesterday, uh, the eighth grade went over to Yoakum and the white team uh, won and the green team lost. And in Quero, Yoakum combined seventh grade teams and Quero seventh graders were victorious over Yoakum 28 to eight. Uh, Big shout out to everybody. Uh, perk up here. Next week is Quirrell's bye week at the high school level. So there will be no varsity JV or freshman game next week. That's October the 5th for Friday night and October the 4th for Thursday night. So those three teams will be open. But uh, the junior high teams will play Cade, which is one of the junior highs out of Victoria. And those games will be uh, – at Patty Welder Stadium in Victoria, go down to Rio Grande, turn left, and go to the HEB, and it's kind of right over there behind the HEB, the old Victoria Patty Welder High School uh, Stadium. Um, and those games will kick off at 4, 5, 6.30, and, and 7.30 on Thursday night. I know you've already done your shout-out to the volleyball team who was listening. Good job by the Lady Gobber Varsity tonight, picking up a district win in three straight – games over in Poteet to move into sole possession of third place I think so, in yep. the district. So if, if it ended today, the Lady Gobblers would be in the playoffs. But uh, they will start uh, second round action on October the 2nd, which is Tuesday night against Pleasanton in Pleasanton. And again, I believe Pleasanton's like ranked third in the state. They were the at state. one time. I'm oh, not they, sure what, what they, they are, are now. now. Okay. Yeah. But they were in the top five when we played them the first, the first go round in district. And um, – the uh, cross-country teams will be competing tomorrow at McNeil, which I think is up in the Brown Rock, Brown Rock area north of, north of Austin. So that's where the uh, cross-country boys and girls will be running uh, tomorrow. And uh, junior high volleyball, uh, they will play Pleasanton on Monday in Quero. They took a, took a tough loss this past Monday against uh, Gonzalez oh. in Gonzalez, and have, they have Pleasanton uh, next week. All right. Well, that's what's uh, going on in Gobbler, Gobbler sports other than other than football. Give you some scores from our district. Uh, Lano, 14, Lakeview, 7. Austin Regents, 27, Wimberley, 13. These are all halftime scores. Crystal City, 16, Bandera, 6. And Navarro is up 14 to nothing over the number five team in the state, Giddings, Buffalo. So... Those are, those are some scores from our district. We have about a minute left to go before we kick this second half off. Both teams are at their ends of the field fixing to – they're warming up, fixing to run through their, their run-through signs. Let me need, read a little public service announcement here, Clay. Uh, if you're not aware, the Coral ISD Education Foundation is proud to announce that the 2018 Concert for Classrooms featuring native Texan Michael Martin Murphy will be uh, performed – at the PAC Performing Arts Center on Saturday, November the 10th at 7 p.m. Uh, and he will be performing his Cowboy Christmas concert. And uh, Michael Martin Murphy uh, is noted and known as one of the best songwriters in America. He's created, crafted, and recorded iconic hits that have topped the pop, country, bluegrass, and western music charts, earning six gold albums and multiple Grammy nominations. And uh, those other performing artists who have performed his songs are kind of a who's who of music. Lyle Lovett, John Denver, Kenny Rogers, Cher, uh, The Monkees, and more. And tickets for the 28 concert for classrooms are now on sale at the ISD Administration Building and via the Foundation's website at www.quarroedfoundation.org. Seating is reserved, and all proceeds will benefit the Quarrel Independent School District teachers and staff through innovative grants that are used to help the students of Quarrel ISD. Thank you, Ray. Gobblers run out on the field uh, same time that the Wharton Tigers run out on the field. So we're fixing to get this second half kicked off. Quarrel leading 20 to 14. Shout out to Lenny Jalefka who is listening in her car headed to work, work tonight for the night shift. Lenny, thank you. Appreciate it. And a shout out to Adolph 
Robinson listening to us in Lawton, Oklahoma. Adolph, we appreciate you listening. Thank you. Wharton Tigers will receive the second half kickoff to, to start this thing off. So, Gobbler defense will be out on the field first. Yeah, just a kind of a interesting set of circumstances there in the first half. Clay, I'm, I'm looking from a statistical standpoint, a time of possession standpoint, and again, turnovers, uh, and just two drives where we didn't get anything out of yeah. it. Down inside their 20 with a, a bad snap that leads to no points. And uh, that was one of the thing, things Coach Reeve uh, stressed going into this game with the with the conditions was uh, control the ball, no turnovers, and we've had two of them. So, high pooch kick uh, by Isaiah Munguia, a uh, fair caught by the Wharton Tiger at the 30-yard line. So, they'll take over from there. Got a flag on the play. This this crew takes their time calling the what, telling us what the uh, penalty is. Ray, looks like it's going to be offsides on Quero. Not going to be a re kick. Just going to be a five yard penalty. They'll take over at their forty yard line. 35, Clay. 35, excuse me. Shout out to the employees at Full of Pep Ranch Center. Thank you all very much for listening. We appreciate it. Tigers come to the line. Two receivers split to either side in a shotgun formation. Low snap uh, kept by the quarterback over the left-hand side, brought down quickly by uh, Trey Moore. No gain, no gain on the play. Second and ten. Have a good trip, trip, trips up top, trips up top. Trips. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. Shotgun formation. Quarterback takes a snap, hands off to the running back, tries to go over the left-hand side. He's met in the backfield. Oh, oh really? Back. He ball, ball hits the ground, picked up by oh, Wharton Tiger. We're, we're get, it's going to be fumbled twice on the same play. He fumbled it. The Wharton guy picked it up and ran with it, and he got way laid, and then he fumbled. The big uh, center, number 72, fell on it the second time. Wharton will keep the ball with a five-yard gain. One of Wharton's receivers, the speedy receivers, is out after being hurt on that play. Two receivers split to either side in a shotgun formation for Wharton. Sec third and five. Ball spotted at the 40-yard line. Quarterback takes a snap, looks flushed out, keeps it himself, tries to go somewhere, Good gets job. nowhere. Two-yard gain. Uh, Trey Moore and number 23. That's a good job. Caleb, Caleb Werner. Werner. Good open field tackle there. Brings up fourth down in a long three. Hey, 54 is looking like he's going to be the center. They're putting, they're putting, they're putting, they're putting, they're putting, they're putting, they're putting. Oh, God almighty. Wharton gets in a punt formation deep for the Gobblers is Jordan Whittington. 
timeout quarrel gobblers. They couldn't get their personnel well, that's, correct. That's a poor job of officiating. They lined up like they were going to go for it, and then they run the punt team out. The the, re, the umpire is supposed to come stand over the ball. Uh, yeah, we're supposed to get a chance to sub. So Quaro had to burn a timeout on that uh, exchange. Energy Waste is a gold sponsor of the Quaro Gobblers Athletic Booster Club, and tonight they'd like to highlight the cheerleaders. They want, they would like to wish the cheerleaders good luck in everything they do this year and the remainder for this tonight and the remainder of the year. So good luck, Quaro Gobbler cheerleaders. Yeah, it looks like Horton's gonna. They're gonna change their mind. Quarrel coaches think that they're not going to punt. Wharton Tigers come back come back out on the field. Looks like the Wharton Tigers are going for it. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Quarterback in a shotgun formation. Fourth, fourth and a long three, close to four. Hands off to the run back up the middle. He can't he didn't get it. Good job. Back. Good job by the defense. What a play. Quick handoff to the running back. He tries to cut it back, and the gobbler, the backside of that gobbler defensive line was there to meet him. Hold him on fourth down. Gobblers take over in Wharton Tiger territory. Ball's going to be spotted at the Wharton 40-yard line. He lost two yards. Nice defensive stand by the Quarrel Gobblers as the offense comes out on the field. That was kind of a circus atmosphere up here trying to figure out whether they were going to punt or not punt. We didn't have our regular defense on the field, and the regular defense we, did a good, did we, a good we job. We had the help of the Quarrel coaches over here telling us. Three receivers yeah. to the left, none to the right. Shotgun formation. Barta takes a snap, turns and hands off. We have uh, – False start on the Quarrel Gobblers. Oh, oh, offsides on the defense. Oh, my God. Your got away with that. Oh, my goodness. What are they doing? Quir it's on them. Okay. The referee called the penalty on the defense, but the uh, the uh, they're marking it off on us. These referees don't know what's going on, Ray. Now, now they call offsides on Quero. Yeah, how, how can you have offsides on the offense? <laughs> I mean, you're either in motion and it's a dead ball foul, I guess, unless they're saying we're lining up offsides. <laughs> yeah. Right. Here we go. First and 15, Gobbers come to the line, shotgun formation. Barta takes a snap, hands off to Grant on a delayed, delayed handoff over the right-hand side. Short gain. <coughs> Bring up second and 13 for the Gobbers. Shout out to the Harveys and the Stanfields listening to the game in the man cave. Thank you all very much. We appreciate it. Gobblers come to the line. Haynes and Jordan Whittington split to the left. Barta is your quarterback. Takes the snap, looks, throws across the middle, hit. hit. The ball is tipped and uh, hits the ground, incomplete. Bring up third and 13. Barta looked, his receiver, looked at his receiver the whole way. The defensive back put the big hand up there and knocked it down. I think you I think you roll him out and you run Whittington run about a thirteen yard curl and let your best receiver athlete see if he can out muscle the guy for the ball. Haynes and Whittington to the left. Shotgun formation, four on the play clock. Takes a snap, rolls to his left. Looks, throws, caught. Jordan Whittington, first down Gobbers. Exact play Ray Reese called. Thank you, Ray. Yes. From the 43 down to the 29, 14 yards when you needed 13. Now 
Nine and a half minutes left to go in the third quarter. Quarrow leading 20 to 14. Two receivers to the right. Shotgun formation. Grant lined up behind Barta. Barta takes a snap, hands off to Grant over the left-hand side, tries to get around the corner, cuts up in the middle, big hole, big gain, close to the first down marker. Nice running there by Kieran Grant. First down, Quarrel Gobblers. Up from the 29 all the way down to the 19. 19. This will be a pretty big possession, Clay, if we can hold them on their opening possession and get it back to a two-score a two score game. Two receivers to the right, shotgun formation. Grant lined up behind Barta, turns and hands off to Grant, over, up the middle, oh, breaking job. tackles, dives, gets extra yardage inside the 15-yard line. That's about the third time tonight he's made three yards in the air. Yeah. Going to bring up second at about four. Ball spotted at the 14-yard line. Two receivers to the right. Chance, Chance Albright lined up behind Barta. Is this, is this light on? Another bad snap. Ball's on the ground deep in the gobbler backfield. Fell on by Chance Albright. There we go. We got flags everywhere following a... Uh, uh, a, a push by a Wharton Tiger. It's been getting really chippy. Yeah. We, we got away with one a minute ago, but they've gotten away with about three. Ours was on when he was on the ground. We bulldozed somebody a minute ago. Gobbler he, may, he may have gotten ejected. Gobbler fans are uh, cheering because of uh, the Wharton Tiger walking off the field slowly. He may have got ejected. Ray, you're right. Number 56? 66. 66. Mario Quintera? 56. 56. 56. 56. Omar Marks. It's a personal I mean, foul on them. Referees are talking this thing over again. It'll be a dead bobble. Let's see. So we had a fumble recovered by us. We've written the word fumble. Wait. Way too many times tonight. Yeah. Bad, and bad, so we, bad, bad we snaps. went from the 13 and the ball's already spotted all the way back out at the 26. So loss of 13. What is going on? Should be 15 yards from where it is right, right. now. First down. First down, right. Yep, 56 is ejected. And now he's going to walk ever so slowly all the way across the field to the field house on the far side. Well, that's the Wharton coach's fault for sending him across the field. Should have sent him down, down the sideline side or around the track. Wow. So the ball will be moved from the 16 back to the 13 because they'll go half the distance to the goal. I would think. I'm not going to predict what this crew is going to do because they've been a little bit unpredictable. Yeah, we we Quarrel came close to getting one a play or two ago. All right. Now so he actually marked off 15. He went all the way to the 11. First and ten, Quarro at the 11. Gobblers come to the line. Two receivers to the right. Shotgun formation. Barta, uh, Barta is your quarterback. Albright lined up to the left of him. Barta takes the snap. Hands off to Albright. Up the middle. He cuts it back. Making people miss. Driven back by a group of Tigers. But not after a tough running and a nice gain there by Chance Albright. Takes it down to the, About the six. six. Yeah, please. pick up, pick up a five. five. Bring up second and five for the Gobblers. No. 
Gobblers break the huddle in a shotgun formation. Two receivers to the right. Lang now more comes in. One receiver to the right. Turns and hands off to Albright. He tries to bounce it. Gets down inside the five, close to the pylon, driven out of bounds, close to the fl- pylon. Was there a flag? There is a flag on the play. Moose has got to block somebody. Moose, come on, Bubba. Offside. <laughs> Folks, we're sorry we're, we're delaying you in our action, but the, we're waiting on the referees yeah, to give us a signal. Offside on – he pointed at Wharton, but he did that a minute ago, and then they marked it off on us. Yep, it is. Offside's Wharton, de- declined by the Gobblers. We'll take the result of the play, which puts the ball all the way down to – The one-yard line. No, I'm sorry, two-yard line. Two-yard line. Gobblers break the huddle in a tight formation. Barda is your quarterback, flanked by uh, three running backs. Hands off to Albright up the middle. He's hit hard at the line of scrimmage and driven back. No gain. Good penetration there by the Wharton defensive line. Second, bring up second and goal from the two. Same formation, tight formation, shotgun. Barta takes a snap, hands off to Albright up the middle. He is met in the backfield, penetration again by the Wharton uh, defensive line. Flags on the play. This has been a flag field contest, Ray. Got a cramp. Holding on the gobblers. Ten yard penalty. Move the ball back to the thirteen yard line, Ray. Thirteen or fourteen. Can't quite tell with uh, with these hash marks uh, on this field, but second and goal from the thirteen. Gobblers break the huddle, two to the right, one to the left. Shotgun formation, Grant lined up to the right of Barta. Roll to the right and throw it to the Drop straight back, looks to his right, throws, caught by Whittington on a wide receiver screen, brought down. No gain. Brings up third and goal from the 13. Five twenty-seven left to go in the third quarter. Twenty to fourteen in favor of the Gobblers. Here they go. Come to the like. They come to the line. Two to the right. One to the left. Bart in a shotgun. Takes a snap. Drops back. Throws. Corner of the end zone. Wide open. Jordan Whittington. He lays out over his head. He was wide open, and uh, pass was a little too long. A little too long. So Isaiah Mungia will come out to attempt the uh, field goal. Going to try a 30-yarder. Holder is number 19, Trey McNary. Good snap, good hold, and looks good from here. Yeah, it is. Good. So, nice. Uh, that's a big kick, man. That's a big kick that by puts Isaiah you up nine points. So with uh, 5.07 left to go in the third quarter, that brings the score to Quarrow 23, Wharton 14. You're listening to Gobbler Football on KMAXSports.com. When your AC stops working, it doesn't care what time it is. Call GBEC Home for emergency AC repair day and night. GBEC has over 40 years of experience in air conditioning service, plus fully stocked high-wear parts and background check professionals you can trust in your home. Serving your needs 24 hours per day, 7 days per week is what we do. Call 800-328-0630. Texas AC License, B016098E. All right, folks, back here at Tiger Stadium. Gobblers are up 23-14. to 
with 5.07 left to go in the third quarter following the uh, Isaiah McGee 30-yard field goal. Wharton is lined up at about their 15-yard line. But he's probably going to pooch this thing to about the 30. And that's exactly what he does. Fair caught by the Tiger at the 30-yard line. No return. Wharton will take over from there. Actually going to spot him at the 29-yard line. First and 10, Wharton. That was a 12-play drive that only covered 27 yards. <laughs> Two receivers split to either side. Shotgun formation for Wharton. Down 23 to 14. Quarterback takes a snap, looks to throw, goes, throws deep, down the field, got a man caught. The defender was Karen Grant. Great throw and catch uh, down to the Gobbler 32-yard line. Ray Wharton has some speed to get behind our uh, DBs. Yeah. I mean, Grant's not, not a slow person. No. And he was behind Grant. That's a... Two receivers split to either side. Shotgun formation. Quarterback takes a snap. Hands off to the running back up the middle. Nothing doing. Trey Moore along with Martin West. Two-yard loss. Brings up second and 12. Wharton quarterback calls the play. Gobblers look like they're coming. They are. Throws out to the left flat. Caught by the running back. Driven out of bounds by Kieran Grant. Gonna, gets out to about the 30. Gets down to about the 31-yard line. Going to bring up third and nine. Three receivers to the right. One to the left. Quarterback takes a snap, drops straight back. He's pressured by uh, uh, Kobe Giles, throws down in the back of the end zone, flags on the play. Pass interference on, uh, who's that, DeAndre Lang over there, Ray? Got flags on both sides of the field. Actually, that should I think that should have been defensive holding and a 10-yard penalty. I mean, he grabbed him, but he grabbed him before the ball, I think before the ball was thrown. It's either going to be 15 yards or 10 yards, so. All right, they're marking off 15. First and 10, Wharton at the 16-yard line. Two receivers split to either side in a shotgun formation. Wharton comes to the line. Quarterback takes a snap, throws out to the right flat, caught, gets down, hit hard, and uh, gets down to about the 12-yard line. Driven out of bounds by Lang and Haynes. Brings up second and six. Trips to the right, one to the left. Quarterback takes a snap, drops straight back, looks to the left. He's flushed. Uh, hang on to him. Driven down uh, by Trey Moore. Trey's a man on a mission again tonight. Loss on the play. Brings up third and nine. Ball's going to be spotted at the 15-yard line. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. 
I think if we can put a little pressure on him, Clay, but keep him in the pocket, don't let him, you know, get outside the quarterback because that's when the, it's too hard to cover. Quarterback takes a snap. Throws into the back of the Pick end zone. Off. Oh, he went up and in, 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 uh, incomplete. Threw it into the corner of the end zone. The defender was Trent Haynes, uh, incomplete. Brings up fourth and nine. Looks like Wharton is going for it. Two receivers put to either side, fourth and nine. Here we go. Wharton goes for it. Takes the snap, drops straight back, looks, throws, no. oh, incomplete. Incomplete, out of way defense. W receiver ran an out route right, right at the chains, and uh, it was a bad throw, incomplete. Gobblers take over. Another defensive stand by the Gobbler defense. 2.36 left to go in the third quarter, up 23 to 14. Gobblers break the huddle with trips to the right, none to the left. Shotgun formation, Grant in the backfield. Barta turns, hands off to Grant, over the right-hand side, up the middle, got some big room out to the 30, still going on his feet out to about the, uh, outside the 40-yard line. Big run there by Kieran Grant. Nice uh, blocking there by the Quero offensive line. Pushes this thing out to the 43-yard line. 28-yard gain and a first down. Trips again to the right. Albright lined up behind Barta. Barta turns, hands off to Albright, up the middle. Another big gain. Flags on the play. Seven-yard gain by Albright, but but this thing may be coming back. I've never seen a lineman call so many holding calls. I mean, he's over here on the sideline throwing the flag for holding. Holding on the quarrel uh, offensive lineman. That was pushes this thing back. Going to bring up first and 20. 20, yes, sir. Why are we going 20 yards? Now he walked back to the original line of scrimmage and then went 10. Because the holding was actually in the backfield. Gobblers break the huddle. Two receivers to the left. Whittington and Lang. Jordan Whittington to the left. Devin Whittington to the right. Now Lang comes to the right. Barta turn, takes the snap. Looks, throws back. Got chance all bright on a, on a line, uh, running back uh, screen. He's down into Gob uh, Wharton territory. Oh, down. What, a, what a good call. Nice play there. Had about four blockers out in front of him. Yeah. Just a little th uh, running back throwback screen. And uh, nobody was on the backside. Ball's taken down to the Wharton 32-yard line. First and 10, Quaro. Pick up a 35 on that screen pass. Shout out to Linda and Charlie listening in Stratton. Thank you all very much. We appreciate it. Gobbers break the huddle. Trips to the right, one to the left. Albright lined up behind Barta. Now Trey Moore comes into the slot position, turns and hands off to uh, Albright up the middle. Big hole, running over people at, down at the 15, inside the 15. There's the chance Albright we uh, we have seen before, Ray. Yeah, just the, running over people all the way to the 14 yard line. 
pick up of 18 on first down by Albright. And another first down. Yeah, let's go Kobe and Fick. Shout out to... Uh, Shout-out to Glithy Cruz, who uh, wants to give the Gobbers a shout-out. Uh, class of 1988. She wants to give a, a recognition to all her uh, co-workers at, H -E at the HEB Deli. Thank you. Appreciate you listening. Three receivers to the right. Albright behind Barta. Turns hands off to Albright up the middle. Another game jumping over, folks, down inside the 10, close to the 5, maybe the 4. Close to the first down, Ray. Yeah. Gonna gonna give it to him right at the five, so he's gonna be just a little bit short. Second and one. Eleven seconds left to go in the third quarter. Gobbers come to the line. Three receivers to the right. Barta turns, hands off to Albright up the middle. Met in the backfield, going to be dropped for a loss. And that is the last play of the third quarter. With Quarrel leading 23-14, to 14, you're listening to Gobber Football on KMAXSports.com. For over 40 years, the Quarrel All Sports Booster Club has been there to support all CISD athletics. The Quarrel All Sports Booster Club raises money throughout the year to assist the athletes in golf, volleyball, tennis, track and field, football, baseball, softball, and cross country. The Booster Club donates over $20,000 each year to support the athletes. Whether it's uniforms, sports equipment, or ice machines, the Quero All Sports Booster Club is there. The Quero All Sports Booster Club meets every Wednesday at Davis Contractors, located on FM 236. Become a member and help us help our kids. This is Colt Reeve, just as the Quero Fighting Gobblers are deep in tradition, so is Kay and Driving. Family owned and operated since 1960, KN has been serving up the best homemade hamburgers, enchiladas, and burritos, along with frosty mugs of KN root beer. Open Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. It is oh so fun and oh so good. KN Drive In, 514 East Broadway in Quero. Come. See them in person. Give them a call at 361-275-3171 or order online at kndriving.com. Go Gobblers! All right, folks, beginning of the fourth quarter, Quarrow's leading 23-14. to They're on uh, Wharton's six-yard line. Third and four. Shotgun formation, Barta. Takes a snap, turns and hands off to Grant. Over the right-hand side. Touchdown. Dives for the goal line. Touchdown, Kieran Grant. He just jumped over. Touchdown, like, Gobblers. Five, like high jump. Looked like five foot five, six in the air right over a guy's head who was standing there. That touchdown brought to you by Brian Gomez State Farm Insurance. Nice run there by Kieran Grant to finish it off with a leaping dive into the end zone. Puts the Gobblers up 29-14 to 14 as they – are going to attempt a two-point conversion. Yeah, you're up 15. There's no sense in being up 16. Two receivers to the right, one to the left, empty backfield. Barta rolls to his right, throws oh, incomplete. Had uh, who is it? Had uh, Trey, Trey Moore, Moore on a uh, tight end throwback. Tight end throwback. Just overthrew him. Overthrew him, yep. So, uh, with 11.56 left to go in the game, Quero's up 29-14. to 14. You're listening to Gobber Football on KMAXSports.com. Energy Waste has provided surface rental equipment to the oil field and construction industry since 1986. Energy Waste is proud to have been recognized as a three-time winner in community and social investment by South Texas Energy Economic Roundtable. Energy Waste is a proud supporter of all Quero ISD athletic programs and all of the supporting organizations and would like to remind you, once a gobbler, always a gobbler. Clay, that was a six-play, 85-yard, 85-yard drive to put you up. I guess if they scored twice and went for two twice, you'd get the, they could get you. But they're two touchdowns and two two-point conversions away. 
Munguia set to, set to kick this uh, thing off. High pooch kick, fair caught at the uh, 36 yard line. First and 10, Wharton at their 36-yard line. Just under a quarter left to go in this thing. Shotgun formation, two receivers split to either side. Quarterback takes the snap, looks to his left, throws out in the flat, caught. Short game. Down on his own. His knee touched the ground. Gain of three. Bring up second and seven. Gain of two, actually. Same formation. Quarterback in the shotgun formation. Takes the snap. Drop straight back. He's flushed. Good job. Stiff arms, throws to a wide open receiver out here in the right flat. Caught in the quarter territory down to about the 32 yard line. He was, there was not a defender anywhere. Uh, not sure what the deal was there, blown coverage or what, but he, there was no one around him. Caught it, got it down to the quarter 32 yard line. First and 10, Wharton. 30 yard pickup. Trey Moore coming off slowly. In for him is uh, Kobe Giles. Two's out, two's out, nine's in. Two receivers split to either side in a shotgun formation. Quarterback takes a snap, drops back, throws deep turn here, turn down the left corner, incomplete. That was a good job by the defensive back. Turned his head and looked at the ball. And if you look at the ball and jump up, they're not they're not supposed to call interference. Nice. Uh, the, 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 the defender there was De DeAndre Lang. So, nice uh, defensive play there by D. Lang. A lot of Ds in that uh, exchange. Right. Watch the scene. Watch the scene. Second and ten. Wharton comes back to the same formation. Quarterback in a shotgun. Takes a snap. Hands off to the running back. He makes people miss. Up the middle. Down at about to about the 20-yard line. Now first we, down. Had him in the hole. Had him in the backfield. Or in the hole, actually. You're right, Ray. He uh, slipped that tackle and uh, got down past the first down marker. First down, Wharton at the quarter 20-yard line. Shotgun formation for the Tigers. Quarterback takes a snap, drops straight back, looks to his right, looks downfield. He's flushed, gets out to the outside, oh, good and tackle. good open field tackle by Can't tell Jackson either. Hardwick. Short gain, gain of one, bring up second and nine. Shotgun formation, two and two. Quarterback takes a snap, hands off to the running back around the left-hand side, got some room at the markers, past the markers, first down Wharton, deep in Quarrow territory. Forced out of bounds at the 12-yard line. I'm sorry, seven-yard line. Eight-yard line, maybe. Going to be first and goal from the eight-yard line for the Warden Tigers. Three receivers split to the right. Quarterback hands off. Ball's on the ground. 
Ex uh, missed exchange there. Ball fell on the ground. Quarterback fell on it. Pushes the ball back to the 10-yard line. Second and goal from the 10. Nine thirty-five left to go in the game. Quarrel up twenty-nine to fourteen. Wharton knocking on the door. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. Quarterback takes the snap, drops straight back, throws across the middle, incomplete. Low pass, incomplete. Brings up third and goal from the ten. Wharton has three timeouts. Quero has two. 9-12 left to go in the game. Shotgun formation. Two receivers split to the left, one to the right with a slot. Quarterback takes a snap, drops back, looks, throws in the corner of the end zone. Caught! Touchdown, Wharton Tigers. Defender was Marcus Gomez. Nice route run there by the uh, receiver. Nice pass by the quarterback. Touchdown, Wharton. As they attempt this extra point. They will not go away, Ray. No. You're going to have to go score again. Good snap, good hold, and uh, the kick is up through the upright. So, with 9.06 left to go in the game, that brings the score to Quarro 29, Wharton 21. You're listening to Gobbler Football on KMAXSports.com. High school coverage on the radio is a lot like Tinder. Hi, lover boy. One flick of the finger and we're gone. Goodbye now. The only difference is you're not going to meet your phone at the bar and go out on a date with it. You are sick. At least I hope not. I mean, come on. But I do believe it was Kevin Garnett who said, This is the KMAX Sports Network. Devon Energy is proud to support the Quero High School Gobblers and all DeWitt County High School athletes. From our team to yours, good luck this season, both on the field and in the classroom. Devon Energy Corporation, Eagle Ford. All right, folks, back here at Tiger Stadium, Quero's up 29-21 with 9.06 left to go in the game following the Wharton touchdown reception. Nine play, 64 yards on the drive. This Wharton team has, has not laid down, folks. This is unlike last year's game when it was 68 to eight, huh, Ray? You're right. This is a much improved Wharton team. They may not have a lot of numbers, but they got a lot of speed and they can catch the ball. And now we got a timeout on the kickoff by by Wharton. Not sure what uh, went wrong there. I think but you put your hands team out there. I wouldn't take a chance. We'll keep it here, folks. Ray, what are you what are you seeing over there with the numbers? Well, you know, they score so quickly in the second half. They've only had the ball. I mean, again, time of possession is going to be dominant to Quero, but. Uh, Seems like we tend to do good two plays and then we give up, you know, 18 on third and 12. Yep. You know. I want to give a shout out to Destiny Destiny Reeve, wife of Travis Reeve tonight. She uh she went to Poti to watch Ainsley, her their daughter, play volleyball and she wasn't able to make tonight's game. So uh, Destiny, here's your shout out. Hope you're listening. Here we go. Squib kick fielded by Trent Haynes at about the 35-yard line. Oh, he got outside. Around the around the right corner, down the gobbler sideline into Wharton territory. And we got 
offsides Wharton. Called by this line judge on this side of the this field. The line judge on this side of the field is a happy flag guy. I mean, he's there's only two penalties in the first half, and there's been a dozen in the second half. We'll just add five yards to the Look, return. we got a Wharton uh, fan right here waving a yellow towel. That may be one of the referee's flags. Yep. Because there's, there's yellow flags everywhere tonight, folks. From the 34. This this crew talks about it more than anything. I will tell you that. So maybe we have two fouls. The ref walks halfway across the field to call it, and then he turns around and goes back to the middle of the field to talk some more. These guys are worse than the Senate Judiciary Committee. <laughs> <laughs> Just talking, 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 nothing ever happens. That was a great one. And now he's going to walk to the far side from the middle of the field to talk to Coach Reeve. No, we were not. Marcus said inside the energy. Jordan was way too far inside. I guess there's two flags. The guy on there's, this side threw one, and there's oh, one. The big one. There's one right over in front of the coral bench. There's two in front of the coral okay. bench. Okay. I see the third one now. Offsides, Wharton. That's declined. Personal foul, Wharton. So the return, made, he made it all the way to the Wharton 47. So from the 34, 16, 3, 19 yards on the return for Trent. And then Wharton picks up a personal foul, which moves it another 15. So Quirrell will start at the Wharton 32. You are correct. Quarrel breaks the huddle, comes to the line. Two receivers to the left. Albright lined up behind Barta. Barta takes the snap. Hands off to Albright. Over the right-hand side. Following his blockers. Oh, down man. inside the 20. Down close into the side of the 15. Big run. Chance Albright. Not Nice run. Ball spotted at the 14-yard line. 18-yard pickup by Albright on first down. Gobblers break the huddle. Trips to the left, one to the right. Albright behind Barta. Now Moore comes in in the slot. Albright. Take, gets the ball over the left-hand side, following his blockers again, down inside the 10, close to the 6. Good run there by Chance Albright, following his blockers. Can you figure out how to just let us sit here and eat up about four minutes before we <laughs> score again so there's no not enough time for them left? Yeah, we need to bleed this this play if clock. If we score here, I don't know. I think I might kick the extra point. Uh, if you go for two again, you give them. You don't make it. You give them the chance. Three to the right. Turns hands off to Grant. He cuts it up. Hit hard. I think he's close to the close first to down. The first down. He got. He's inside the five. They're gonna say third down. It's gonna bring up third and inches. Probably the best thing that could happen there. Yeah. Keep, keep the clock keep running. Keep the clock running. Chew, chew 40 seconds here. Now we're stopping the clock. They're talking again. They're caucusing. Official timeout. Oh, they're going to measure. They're going to measure. Yeah, 
the, the linesman has gone to the 10 yard line to grab the chain and come out. So he's definitely short. Yeah. Looks like about a foot and a half, maybe. Yep. But the lines on their field are so crooked, you could you could look at it from <laughs> out in the middle of the field and think you were not there and you could be there. They're really, they're really not very straight. All right, so about, about a foot, third and about a foot. I know nobody else does it, but Tom, Tom Brady in his career, I promise you, in the NFL – is probably 99% effective on third and two or less on a quarterback sneak. If you don't give any cadence and you go up there, there it's almost impossible to stop. Ball spotted just inside the five-yard line, third and short. Barda in a shotgun. Grant lined up behind him. Snap, handoff to Grant, over the right-hand side. First down, Quo, close touchdown. to the touchdown. It's fixed to call it close to the goal line, and they gave him a touchdown. So, nice uh, – Tough running there by Kieran Grant to punch it in for the Gobber touchdown. That touchdown brought to you by Brian Gomez State Farm Insurance. Yeah. 7.06 left to go in the game. Quo up 35-21 with the extra point to follow. Low snap. Put down. Good job. Good kick by Isaiah Munguia. Good Mugia. job by the holder, too. That brings the score to Quero 36, Wharton 21 with 7.06 left to go in the game. You're listening to Gobber Football on KMAXSports.com. Vibe Media is the state's most comprehensive high school sports media outlet covering UIL, private schools. Vibe has been in Texas for over a decade. Visit their website at Vibe, V-Y-P-E, Texas.com. And also pick up your Vibe magazine today. Get in the game with Vibe Media. High school coverage on the radio is a lot like Tinder. Hi, lover boy. One flick of the finger and we're gone. Goodbye now. The only difference is you're not going to meet your phone at the bar and go out on a date with it. You are sick. At least I hope not. I mean, come on. But I do believe it was Kevin Garnett who said, This is the KMAC Sports Network. Back here at Tiger Stadium, Quarrel up 36-21, 7.06 left to go in the game. Quarrel, shortest drive of the night. Uh, four plays, only had to cover uh, 30, 36 yards after the good kickoff return and the personal foul on the kickoff return. Personal fouls against Wharton has definitely benefited the Gobblers tonight. That's true. High pooch kick, fair caught. Ball's on the ground. Our ball. Our ball. Our ball. Quail, Quail gets the ball. That That's a mistake by the Warden player. The guy behind him had called yes. fair catch, and the guy that was 10 yards from where the ball landed backed up 10 yes. yards and tried to catch it. Yep. Trust your teammates. He didn't trust his teammate. He tried to go get it himself, caught it up around his face mask, or tried to catch it up around his face mask, bounced right down on the ground, gobblers recover, short field. Looking to put this thing away. Ball's at the uh, 20, 23. Shotgun formation, Albright lined up behind Barta, th three to the left. Moore in a slot. Barta. Ball's on the ground. Wharton recovers it on the mishandled uh, snap. The third one tonight, Ray. That is not what the Gobblers needed at this point right here. Nope. Fumbles on back-to-back -back plays. Oh, the ball. No. Referees, guess what they're doing, Ray? They're talking about it. Right. Wharton is celebrating that they got the ball. Our defense has already walked on the field. No, Bart is still out there. Let's 
That would be huge if they were offsides. The announcer is saying that there's a flag on the field. I don't see it. Yeah, the lighting is so bad in the stadium and the grass is so dead. The yellow is <laughs> in the rain, it's hard to see. Looks like our offense is staying out there. We must know something. Man, what are they talking about? Twelve men on the field. Twelve, Twelve men on the field for Wharton. This ball will stay with Quo. Big break. Boy, Ray, penalties have killed Wharton tonight. Yeah. We've hurt ourselves with turnovers. They've <laughs> definitely hurt themselves. You know what I'm saying with yeah, penalties. Yep. Both coaches are going to have plenty to talk about, win or lose, about things that need to get cleaned up. All right, first and five for the Gobblers at the Wharton 18-yard eight, line. Gobblers break the huddle. Albright lined up behind Barta, two to the left, none to the right. Barta takes a snap, hands off to Albright, up the middle, bounces it, cut down. Gets to the original line of scrimmage. He's cut down, and he's slow getting up. Yeah, he took a shot down low. Biggest thing here is, is even if you don't score, if you can chew up two minutes. Yeah. You, All, Albright limps off as Grant comes in. We need to work on learning to use the, the whole 40 seconds. Snap the ball with like one or two seconds left. Three receivers to the right. Grant lined up behind Barta. Barta did a good job there. Hands off to Grant up the middle. He's oh, running over people, folks. Grant over. Lowering his head. We got extracurricular after the play. No flags. Did a good Barta did a good job there of snapping that thing with five seconds left. So brings up third and one. Because if you don't make it here, I don't think you try. I don't know. I guess if you try to field goal, you definitely put yourself up more than two touchdowns. But I would think we'd go for it if we don't make it. Two receivers to the right. Grant lined up behind Barta. Barta takes a snap, hands off to Grant, cuts it up the middle, first down, Quarrow. Yeah. Best thing was he only made two by maybe three yards, but now we get to run four more plays. Coral needs to really keep their cool right right, right about now. now you don't want a penalty. Because Wharton is really uh, pushing the limit with those guys in green and white. 5-15 and counting. Gobbler, gobblers break the huddle with 10 seconds left on the play clock. Three receivers to the right. Grant lined up behind Barta. Barta takes the snap, hands off to Grant, over the right-hand side. He cuts it up the middle, tough running. Second down. He got it to the eight. Four and a half minutes left to go in the game. Good job. They called coaches called Barta over to the sideline. He's not getting in the huddle till 13 seconds left. Breaking the huddle with nine. Three receivers to the left. Grant lined up behind Barta. Three on the play clock. Snaps it with one. Hands off to Grant. Over the left hand side. He spins. Touchdown. Gets down. Jumps into the end zone. Touchdown, Karen Grant. Uh, the nice run there by Karen Grant from eight yards out. Did the last four of it all by himself. That touchdown brought to you by Brian Gomez, State Farm Insurance. Isaiah Mungia set to kick the extra point. Good 
Good snap, good hold, and uh, good yeah. kick. So, folks, with 4.02 left to go in the game, the score is Quarrel 43, Wharton 21. You're listening to Gobbler Football on KMAXSports.com. When your AC stops working, it doesn't care what time it is. Call GVEC Home for emergency AC repair day and night. GVEC has over 40 years of experience in air conditioning service, plus fully stocked high-wear parts and background check professionals you can trust in your home. Serving your needs 24 hours per day, 7 days per week is what we do. Call 800-328-0630. Texas AC License, B016098E. All right, folks, back here at Tiger Stadium following the Kieran Grant touchdown run to, to push the Gobblers uh, even further ahead, 43-21. to 21. That drive was only a five-play drive, covered 23 yards following the muffed kickoff by the Tigers. Mungia. High kick. Fair caught at the 32 yard line by the Tiger. The same one that muffed it earlier. So they, they got on the same page on that play. Wharton takes over. Safeties are a good 20 yards deep. Two receivers split to either side. Shotgun formation. Wharton takes a snap, drops straight back, looks quick throw out to the left flat yeah. while the receiver runs down the right. down the sideline. He threw a, he threw an out, he threw an out and the receiver ran a go. <laughs> Or a fly or whatever, different terminology, but they, they were not on the same page. Second and ten. Mm. Quarterback takes a snap, hands off to the running back. He tries to bounce it out to the, around the left-hand side. Gets around the corner, but, but pulled down short of the first down. Number 32, Joe Cardenas made that play. We have an injured gobbler on the gobbler sidelines. Yeah, they're picking up his legs and pushing in his toes. We'll take a, a break too, folks. Uh, with 3.42 left to go in the game, Quarrels up 43-21. You're listening to Gobbler Football on KMAXSports.com. Bite Media is the state's most comprehensive high school sports media outlet covering UIL, private schools. Bite has been in Texas for over a decade. Visit their website at Bite, B Y P E, Texas.com. And also pick up your Bite magazine today. Get in the game with Bite Media. Devon Energy is proud to support the Quarrel High School Gobblers and all DeWitt County High School athletes. From our team to yours, good luck this season, both on the field and in the classroom. Devon Energy Corporation, Eagle Ford. All right, folks, the injured gobbler is up. Looks like it was just a cramp. The player that forced the uh, Tiger out of bounds was actually Austin Schwartz. Brings up third and a long four. Balls at the uh, Wharton 34-yard line. Quarterback takes a snap, drops back, looks, throws out in the right flat, oh, caught. He's out to the 40. Cut down by Marcus Gomez, but not after a Wharton first down. Took just that, a little. Took that thing out to the 47-yard line. Go ahead, Ray. Just a little wheel route kind of or flare pattern by the back out of the backfield. 
But Quirrell's playing smart. We're playing three deep at this point. Russian three. We got Shotgun formation, two receivers split to either side. Two linebackers and it looks like five defensive backs. Quarterback takes snap, drops back, flushed. Going to run it himself inside Gobber territory down to about the 46-yard line. Gain of about seven. Going to bring up third and three. Uh, I'm sorry, second and three. Wharton comes to the line, two receivers split to either side. Quarterback in a shotgun. Takes the snap, fakes the handoff, looks to his left. Oh, hang Trey on. Moore chasing him, keeps it himself down the uh, Tiger sideline, driven out of bounds by number 32, uh, Joe Cardenas, and number six, Kieran Grant. First down, Wharton. Going to give him the 41-yard line, first and 10, Wharton. 217 left to go in the game. Clock is stopped. Quarterback uh, ran out of bounds. Ran out of bounds. We can tackle them in the field of play a couple times. I would doubt that they're going to try to call timeout. Quarterback takes snap, throws deep, got a man picked in, off, picked off oh. in, in, in uh, incomplete. I'm sorry. I don't look like he. Yeah, it, I thought he came down I with it. Too. It must have bounced. Out. It's so dark over there in the I corner. Know. It's hard to see. I thought Austin Schwartz had yep. a pick. Schwartz was the defender, thought he had the pick. Second and ten. Two receivers split to either side in a shotgun formation. Quarterback takes a snap, hands off to the run back, up the middle. Big gain, down inside the 30. Down, the ball's on the ground. Not sure who's got it. They're giving it to Wharton. Nope, they're giving it to Quirrell. And there is no, this play is under further review in <laughs> high school football unless it's a state championship game. So Quero takes over following the, the, the turnover by the Wharton Tigers. Ball is going to be spotted at the 26-yard line. It was a nice run there by the Wharton running back, but he coughed it up. Gobblers break the huddle. Two receivers split to the right. Your quarterback is Chase Blackwell. Blackwell turns and hands off to the running back over the right-hand side. Chance Albright. Chance Albright over the right-hand side. Short gain. And Wharton will not try to stop this clock. Three receivers split to the left. Blackwell in a shotgun. Albright lined up behind him. Takes a snap. Hands off to Albright over the left-hand side. He bounces it. Cuts up field. Out to about the 40-yard line. Nice run there by Chance Albright. Good job by Chance Albright. From the 26 all the way out to the 40. Wharton players lay, laying all over the field. They're done, folks. First and 10, Quero, 40-yard line. I have one line left on my stat sheet, man. And we're going to run one more play. There you go. And go to the house. This will be the last snap. Because it will go under 40 seconds before we snap it. If Blackwell, Blackwell, shotgun formation, single receiver split to either side. Takes the snap, hands off to number 26.
Tyler Gomez takes that snap, and uh, that's going to be the last play of the ball game, folks. Your score is Quarrel 43, Wharton 21. You're listening to Gobber Football on KMAXSports.com. High school coverage on the radio is a lot like Tinder. Hi, lover boy. One flick of the finger and we're gone. Goodbye now. The only difference is you're not going to meet your phone at the bar and go out on a date with it. You are sick. At least I hope not. I mean, come on. But I do believe it was Kevin Garnett who said, This is the KMAX Sports Network. This is Colt Reeve just as the Quarrel Fighting Gobblers are deep in tradition, so is KN Drive-In. Family owned and operated since 1960, KN has been serving up the best homemade hamburgers, enchiladas, and burritos, along with frosty mugs of KN Root Beer. Open Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. It is oh so fun and oh so good. KN Drive-In, 514 East, Broadway in Quero. Come see them in person. Give them a call at 361-275-3171 or order online at kndriving.com. Go Gobblers! For over 40 years, the Quero All Sports Booster Club has been there to support all CISD athletics. The Quero All Sports Booster Club raises money throughout the year to assist the athletes in golf, volleyball, tennis, track and field, football, baseball, softball, and cross country. The Booster Club donates over $20,000 each year to support the athletes. Whether it's uniforms, sports equipment, or ice machines, the Quero All Sports Booster Club is there. The Quero All Sports Booster Club meets every Wednesday at Davis Contractors, located on FM 236. Become a member and help us help our kids. We hope you're enjoying tonight's broadcast. And while all of us at the KMAX Sports Network are huge football fans, we broadcast more than just football, you know. In fact, KMAX Sports proudly broadcasts volleyball, girls and boys basketball, softball, baseball, soccer, lacrosse, and more. For more information on how you can help KMAX Sports broadcast any of those sports, just reach out to chuck at kmaxsports.com or merle at kmaxsports.com or contact that sports booster club directly. KMAX Sports will gladly work with you and the booster clubs to get that team's broadcasts on the air. And if you're a fan of the other team, well, we can broadcast your team's games too. We realize that, yes, even in Texas, there's more to life than just work. When your AC stops working, it doesn't care what time it is. Call GBEC Home for emergency AC repair day and night. GBEC has over 40 years of experience in air conditioning service, plus fully stocked high-wear parts and background check professionals you can trust in your home. Serving your needs 24 hours per day, 7 days per week is what we do. Call 800-328-0630. Texas AC License, B0 E. For over 40 years, the Quero All Sports Booster Club has been there to support all CISD athletics. The Quero All Sports Booster Club raises money throughout the year to assist the athletes in golf, volleyball, tennis, track and field, football, baseball, softball, and cross country. The Booster Club donates over $20,000 each year to support the athletes. Whether it's uniforms, sports equipment, or ice machines, the Quero All Sports Booster Club is there. The Quero All Sports Booster Club meets every Wednesday at Davis Contractors, located on FM 236. Become a member and help us help our kids. Energy Waste has provided surface rental equipment to the oil field and construction industry since 1986. Energy Waste is proud to have been recognized as a three-time winner in community and social investment by South Texas Energy Economic Roundtable. Energy Waste is a proud supporter of all Quero ISD athletic programs and all of the supporting organizations and would like to remind you, once a gobbler, always a gobbler. This is Colt Reeve just as the Quero Fighting Gobblers are deep in tradition, so is KN Drive-In. Family owned and operated since 1960, KN has been serving up the best homemade hamburgers, enchiladas, and burritos, along with frosty mugs of KN Root Beer. Open Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. 
It is oh so fun and oh so good. KN Drive-In, 514 East Broadway in Quero. Come see them in person. Give them a call at 361-275-3171 or order online at knjriving.com. Go Gobblers! Lance Tire Service is your one-stop shop for tires, brakes, alignments, and general automotive repair. They offer 24-hour road service for passenger vehicles, light trucks, agricultural, ATVs, industrial, and light commercial. They've moved to a new location, 1003 West Heaton on Highway 72 in Quero. Stop by and visit with Clayton and Clifford. Their friendly staff is always ready to assist you with any questions you may have. If nothing else, stop by to visit with Clayton's trusty dog, Cleo. Check out their website at lancetireservice.net. You can get a quote, see promotions, shop tires, and look at services offered. Lance Tire is a proud gold sponsor of the Quero Gobblers All Sports Booster Club. Give them a call at 361-275-2387. Lance Tire Service. Anytime, anywhere, we'll be there. We hope you're enjoying tonight's broadcast. And while all of us at the KMAC Sports Network are huge football fans, we broadcast more than just football, you know. In fact, KMAC Sports proudly broadcasts volleyball, girls and boys basketball, softball, baseball, soccer, lacrosse, and more. For more information on how you can help KMAC Sports broadcast any of those sports, just reach out to chuck at kmacsports.com or merle at kmacsports.com or contact that sports booster club directly. KMAC Sports will gladly work with you and the booster clubs to get that team's broadcasts on the air. And if you're a fan of the other team, well, we can broadcast your team's games too. We realize that, yes, even in Texas, there's more to life than just football. KMAC Sports, bringing your teams to you for 14 years. Energy Waste has provided surface rental equipment to the oil field and construction industry since 1986. Energy Waste is proud to have been recognized as a three-time winner in community and social investment by South Texas Energy Economic Roundtable. Energy Waste is a proud supporter of all Quero ISD athletic programs and all of the supporting organizations and would like to remind you, once a gobbler, always a gobbler. For over 40 years, the Quero All Sports Booster Club has been there to support all CISD athletics. The Quero All Sports Booster Club raises money throughout the year to assist the athletes in golf, volleyball, tennis, track and field, football, baseball, softball, and cross country. The Booster Club donates over $20,000 each year to support the athletes. Whether it's uniforms, sports equipment, or ice machines, the Quero All Sports Booster Club is there. The Quero All Sports Booster Club meets every Wednesday at Davis Contractors, located on FM 236. Become a member and help us help our kids. Devon Energy is proud to support the Quero High School Gobblers and all DeWitt County High School athletes. From our team to yours, good luck this season, both on the field and in the classroom. Devon Energy Corporation, Eagle Ford. Lance Tire Service is your one-stop shop for tires, brakes, alignments, and general automotive repair. They offer 24-hour road service for passenger vehicles, light trucks, agricultural, ATVs, industrial, and light commercial. They've moved to a new location, 1003 West Heaton on Highway 72 in Quero. Stop by and visit with Clayton and Clifford. Their friendly staff is always ready to assist you with any questions you may have. If nothing else, stop by to visit with Clayton's trusty dog, Cleo. Check out their website at lancetireservice.net. You can get a quote, see promotions, shop tires, and look at services offered. Lance Tire is a proud gold sponsor of the Quero Gobblers All Sports Booster Club. Give them a call at 361-275-2387. Lance Tire Service. Anytime, anywhere, we'll be there. We hope you're enjoying tonight's broadcast. And while all of us at the KMAC Sports Network are huge football fans, we broadcast more than just football, you know. In fact, KMAC Sports proudly broadcasts volleyball, girls and boys basketball, 
softball, baseball, soccer, lacrosse, and more. For more information on how you can help KMAX Sports broadcast any of those sports, just reach out to chuck at kmaxsports.com or merle at kmaxsports.com or contact that sports booster club directly. KMAX Sports will gladly work with you and the booster clubs to get that team's broadcasts on the air. And if you're a fan of the other team, well, we can broadcast your team's games too. We realize that, yes, even in Texas, there's more to life than just football. KMAX Sports, bringing your teams to you for 14 years. Energy Waste has provided surface rental equipment to the oil. All right, folks, we're back here at Tiger Stadium. The final being Quarrel 43, Wharton 21. As Ray's finishing up the numbers, uh, Gobblers came out the second half with some help from the Wharton Tigers penalty-wise. Uh, and turnover-wise, the, they uh, put this thing out of reach uh, late, late, late in the fourth quarter. So uh, while we're waiting on 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 Ray, just a reminder: if you're still listening out there, uh, we are not going to be on the air next week. The Gobblers have a bye, and uh, we'll be back on the air the following Friday as we travel to uh, Bandera. So don't tune in next week; we won't be here. Okay, quick quick summary here. Uh, good second half uh, for the Gobblers, obviously, but uh, statistically ended like this. First downs, Quarrel 24, Wharton 12. Uh, Quarrel 46 rushing, rushes at, for 185 yards. Wharton 25 for 116. Uh, I know Coach Linscombe will be pleased with that, with the backs that they have to hold them under four yards, you know, right at four yards of carry. Uh, passing yards for Quarrel 248, uh, Wharton 188, and uh, Quarrel was 15 of 18 with one, the with the one interception. Wharton was 11 of 19 with no interceptions. Quirrell, and, that, and that's with throwing uh, uh that that's with uh, 12 of 13 for the first, first half. half right, so we yeah. didn't we didn't throw the ball much, much at all. Second, second half, half. Uh, fumbles. A lot of balls fumbled today. Not that many lost. Quarrel put it on the ground four times, all on bad snaps. Uh, Wharton fumbled it five times and lost two. Quarrel four and only lost one. Quarrel five penalties for 50 yards. Wharton four for 40. And probably the other the other big uh, big number that that I haven't written down here, but let's do this: 14, 55, and 17, 52. 55 and 52 is 107 seconds, so that's 47 and uh, one minute and 17 and 14. Quarrel had the ball 32 minutes and 47 seconds to Wharton's 15 minutes and 13 seconds. That's big. Uh, more than two to more, more than two, two to one. one. Two yep. to one. Like you said, we won't be here next week. We've enjoyed having you with us tonight. Thanks for listening, folks. All right, we'll see you in two weeks. Good night, everybody.